What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn as Denki Kaminari, God of Electricity, Part 2. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. After that, Kaminari communicates with the voice inside his head as he walks towards UA Academy. Along the way, he simply dodges crowded places and just walks casually towards UA. He knows what is going on with him, he read up on the internet the sweet age of information is around. Currently, he is in the beginning stages of second personality creation. Honestly, he is in the middle about this. He could have that guy exercise, do chores, study, take written exams and such. But then the part where he could possibly take over comes. I will have to destroy it. That is the conclusion Kaminari comes up to instantly. He knows why his second personality appeared. He just has to overcome and destroy those things. It seems like I must let go of some things. And do so quickly. In the end, due to him wearing a face mask, no one recognized him as he walked to school. As he walks along the hallway to his classroom, he sees that his classmates seem to all be talking about how they got recognized from the sports festival. To Kaminari this was unimportant as he greeted everyone nicely. Good morning everyone. As he says that, goes and takes his seat, Kirishima is the one to ask him. Kaminari, what about you? I bet that you got recognized a lot due to being in the first place. Kaminari smiles at this smugly. No, not really. I went to buy groceries during the two-day break and saw that people recognized me. So I went through Sanju district to come to the academy. That way, not a lot of people recognized me especially since I was wearing a face mask. As Kaminari says that, everyone whines at that because while it is nice in the beginning to be recognized in the streets, it gets annoying real fast. He is stronger, more creative, and even smarter than everyone in the class. He can easily solve math problems that baffle me. Contemplates Momo as she remembers that one time when Kaminari explained to her some homework by using chat snap to communicate with her. He is the guy who never studies but still takes first place in every exam. Kaminari seems to feel her gaze on him so he just turns around and smiles at her. This gesture makes Momo blush a little as she too waves back at him. What about you, Momo? Did anyone recognize you? Asks Kaminari as he starts getting closer to Momo. But before Momo can answer, the classroom door is opened once again, and it is Aizawa. This makes all of the students go back to their seats. Mornin greets Aizawa as he enters the classroom. He then goes to his desk and puts down some documents and he says, Today, we will be choosing your hero name. Y-H-H-H-H-H. The whole rowdy part of the classroom screams out in joy. How awesome. This will be our time to shine. Yells out Kirishima, his voice full of joy. He thought that Aizawa might decide to have a surprise quiz or something like that. Aizawa still in the end just explains as the students go quiet as they see his hair going up and his eyes turn into a scary red. Anyway, after this, there will be kind of like an internship. The pro heroes saw you all in action during the sports festival, so they will mostly choose based on that. Also, they can cancel the internship at any time if they see that you don't have what it takes or something like that. So, in a way, by summing it up, one can say that they are simply showing an interest in your futures. Many students whisper between each other, discussing what these alternatives mean. In the end, Aizawa just shows the polls while saying, usually these things are more spread out, but, you know, what the poll shows is that Kaminari has over 7,735 requests. While in second place was Todoroki with around 3632. Then comes Momo with 1456. Bakugo has 1273. After that comes Kirishima with 987. After that everyone else has small numbers in comparison. Some had none, like Midoriya had zero. Well, it's not like heroes aren't willing to try training him. It's just that since Deku gets injured way too much by using his quirk, no one wants to take responsibility for that. The students start discussing amongst themselves again. But Aizawa ends that short by saying, No matter if you were chosen or not, in the future you will get to still work with a pro. After that, Aizawa just goes on his futon and starts sleeping while midnight comes into the room. Everyone chooses their names, while Kaminari still contemplates a little. Lightning Rod, Lightning Killer, 
lightning murderer, lightning storm, or just storm, suggest the voice inside his head. Those are all shitty names, also two of them sound like villain names. Definitely an evil second personality. Getting rid of you as fast as I can, says Kaminari in his mind. In the end, Kaminari picks the one that he has already chosen. He also already made sure that this name wasn't already chosen. As Kaminari comes to the stand, he sees his whole classroom look at him as he shows them his whiteboard with his name written on it. Flash, you freaking stole that from a comic and it's not at all original. But I will give you points for not showing what your power is in your hero name. Can't you just give an honest compliment instead of going the roundabout way of doing it? Ha? Huh? Well, I am sorry that you need a compliment to prove your self-worth and that you feel that your existence can only be justified by other people and their opinions. Kaminari just internally sighs at this. His developing second personality is like his brother, fearless and completely bastardish. Midnight looks at his name and smiles. Very good, nice and catchy. After that everyone gets their hero uniforms in a suitcase and for people who had over 1000 requests the students are given a slip of paper with the top agencies amongst them. As Kaminari glances amongst them, he can't help it as his eyes wander towards the female heroes. And that is when immediately the whisper comes back and this time it has a very deadly serious voice. If you choose a female hero just because of their looks, then you will increase your chances of dying a very gruesome death at the hands of a hero. This is not a joke, you are not playing at being a hero here. This is not a game, you will die. Due to the deadly tone to his voice the whisper talked, it pulled Kaminari out of his thoughts. And in the end, he talks back to the whisper inside his head. I wasn't gonna do that. It would be dumb and I know it. I am not some thirsty virgin about this. The whisper doesn't say anything at this and Kaminari just looks at the paper in his hand and there is one agency that catches his eye and that it would be useful. Later on in the day, Kaminari takes the train to go to his agency and he is in front of a big five-story building. He takes a deep breath as he goes in. As he knocks on the door, he can't help but contemplate that this was the right choice for him. Yeah? Who is this? Says someone as the door is opened. The one who opened it is a fairly well-built young woman with a rather slim build. Her skin light blue. She has short, ruffled dark blue hair that curves upwards and downwards around her head, parted to her left, and wide yellow eyes with thick eyelashes. Also, she is wearing her hero costume consisting of a skin-tight dark blue crop top with a white high-collared section, a zipper down the middle, over the higher part of her chest, which reveals her torso from the underside of her breasts. She wears black tights with loose white shorts, two yellow markings down either side of them, and thick white boots with lines running down their shafts, yellow rings in the center of them. Over her entire face, she wears a transparent visor with an air filter on each side, and on her hands, she wears plain dark blue gloves. As Kaminari sees the girl in front of him, he has a soft smile on his face as he asks, Is this Naitai's agency? The blue-skinned girl nods at that. Yep. So you must be Kaminari then? No wonder you looked familiar. Also yes, Naitai is currently waiting for you in his office. I will show you the way. As Kaminari hears that, he nods and starts following Bubble Girl. Lead the way. They walk towards the personal office of Night Eye. The girl couldn't help but ask Kaminari different questions about himself. Kaminari of course politely gave her complex answers that told nothing. The girl noticed that she has been a hero for quite some time. She can tell when someone isn't giving her anything about himself, plus Night Eye makes sure that his sidekicks can tell when someone is playing them. But she still continues to ask him some questions, while Kaminari answered all of them. They then arrive at an office with a sign which reads, Night Eye. Bubble Girl opens the door for Kaminari and whispers to him, Good luck, Kaminari, Kuin. Thanks. I hope that I make a good impression too, answers Kaminari and as he does so, he can hear the whisper in his head scold him. She already figured out that you were bullshitting her. You need to be better at this. Shut up. I already noticed that. Kaminari coldly disciplines his personality. Don't talk unless I ask you to. The voice seems like it wants to say something. But Kaminari just thinks about shocking his brain to stop the voice. Then the voice stops. As he enters Naitai's office, he sees that the office is simple and it only has a bookshelf on the corner, a desk with a laptop on it. That is where Naitai is sitting. And there are a lot of All Might posters and figurines around. A lot of them were even limited edition. Naitai is wearing a gray suit with glasses. He has yellow eyes with greed hair with some strands of yellow too. He is currently wearing a light gray suit. Kaminari waves slightly at him and with a smile on his face says, Well, hello there, sir. My name is Denki Kaminari. A pleasure to meet you. Night Eye looks at Kaminari in the eyes 
and he gets up from his desk and gives Kaminari a handshake. Nice to meet you too, Kaminari. I must say that you were impressive during your sports festival. Though Kaminari heard that, he sees that Night Eye still has a serious expression on his face. He is unsure what the man is truly thinking, so he asks the whisper. Oi, do you have any idea what he seems to really think of me? Yeah, he is thinking of how you will impress him and dash, but Kaminari interrupts it. As expected, you only know as much as I do. Useless, you are supposed to represent what I think is strong. But you are useless. Acting powerful without anything to back it up is called arrogance. Kaminari has a polite smile on his face as he reasons. It might have seemed impressive from an outside perspective, sir. But it was only due to the advantages that I won. I also don't plan to stagnate, as some of my classmates might catch up if I do something like that. So I hope that you will be able to help me become a better hero, Sir Night Eye. Night Eye smirks slightly at this. I see. Then I will help you to the best of my abilities. Kaminari nods at this. So what should I do first, sir? Night Eye pushes his glasses up. We will spar first. I will show you a manner flaw that I saw during your fights at the sports festival. Major flaw? Wonders Kaminari, he obviously isn't arrogant enough to think that he has no flaws in his fighting style, but a major one. Okay, we will start immediately. Attack me, Kaminari Kuin. I will show you your flaws, and we will work together to fix them, declares Night Eye. To Kaminari, he is moderately polite, unlike when during canon he met Midoriya during the canon timeline. Still, as soon as Night Eye declares that, Kaminari goes on full attack. His body is covered in lightning and his reaction time becomes lightning fast. He charges towards Night Eye and sees that the man somehow dodges. He knows that Night Eye can look into the future, but Kaminari knows that with his speed that is useless. So even as Night Eye dodges him, he just changes direction slightly and attacks Night Eye. He sees that Night Eye can't dodge anymore, but suddenly the floor shifts slightly and it causes Kaminari to stumble. But he easily regains his footing and jumps up, using the ceiling as a foothold. He then pushes off the ceiling and charges towards Night Eye. But by this time Night Eye has a gun in his hand and shoots at Kaminari as he is midair. Kaminari couldn't dodge this due to being midair and the bullet was quite fast too. But at the same time, he knows that the bullet will be destroyed by the electricity as soon as it gets close to his body. But contrary to his expectations, the bullet explodes and turns into a thin net. Kaminari concentrates his lightning into his hand and cuts through the net easily. Night Eye has already started jumping back to dodge Kaminari as soon as he shot the net. You can cut through the net with electricity, advises the Whisper, with its usual teasing tone gone. Kaminari doesn't follow the advice of the Whisper. Instead he grabs the net and throws it at Night Eye while at the same time he holds tightly from the other side. As soon as the other side touches Night Eye, Kaminari sends a slight current of electricity, just enough to jolt Night Eye a little. Night Eye, on the other hand, is completely surprised as he feels the shock run through his body. What? I didn't see this future? How is that possible? Kaminari turns off his lightning mode and his hair falls downwards again as he lands on the ground. He looks at Night Eye and smiles a little as he sees the man's surprised look. Night Eye has the right to be surprised. Never once in his life has a prediction of his been wrong. This, this kid, he changed it. The future was supposed to go with Kaminari directly charging at Night Eye after cutting his net. Then Night Eye would this time throw a rubbery restrictive substance from the same gun that threw the net, and Kaminari's feet would be stuck to the floor. The lesson being that Kaminari relies too much on a foothold to exert his power. If he is midair, he isn't even half as strong as he is on the ground. His power relies completely on his speed. That was supposed to be the lesson, but that is useless now, as Kaminari sent the small electric shock through the net. Pretty much saying that, he could have sent more voltage and completely paralyzed Night Eye, or even knocked him out easily. This kid can change the future. If so, then, hope appears in Night Eye's heart. So he couldn't help but get close to Kaminari and touch his forehead with his finger. His quirk activates fully as he looks into Kaminari's future. Night Eye looks at Denki as his eyes widen a little in surprise. But he calms down once again and says with a calm voice, Kaminari Kuin, you have amazing potential. I have seen your future, as he says that Kaminari can easily see that it was something bad. Once Night Eye saw that Kaminari could change the future, he was relieved, having hoped to save All Might from that gruesome death of his. But, so what was it? Asks Kaminari, his voice and face calm. There is no use panicking over something like that. Plus, even the whisper inside of him was being quiet, due to being modeled after his older brother. 
If he is in danger, even the second personality would cooperate. I think that you should leave your hero career behind, or else you will die a brutalizing death by the hands of a villain within a year or two, says Night Eye as he looks at Kaminari with a worried look on his face. He knows that his visions will always come true. When he sees it, it's like it's set in stone and ready to happen. I will also like to drop you from my agency now. I won't take any responsibility for your life anymore. Kaminari is about to refute that, but before he can do, so the Whisper says to him. If that is true, then you must leave the hero life. As the Whisper said that, its voice becomes colder as it speaks along, and the voice starts resembling his brother's even more. It almost feels like his brother is just behind him and speaking clearly. Don't worry. You know that someone like Irie, if she gets involved, then the prediction could change easily. Reasons Kaminari. Don't mess around. This is your life we are talking about. You think that you will somehow miraculously survive if you are in a sticky situation. No, you won't. So start being realistic. Don't take chances on something like this. The whisper for the first time ever is actually mad. Even Denki is startled by it as his brother's uncanny voice says that. He also knows that this is something his brother would say too. He knows that taking risks like this isn't the best of ideas, but if he at the same time follows what his brother told him, then he would just have to retire and live the rest of his life thinking of what could have been. Brother, it's my life dash, and you will waste it. That is when Kaminari did something strange that he hasn't done in this life. Stand up to his brother. No. You listen, brother. If I leave now, I know that I will regret it. I will always think of what could have been. Then what? I will just live a miserable life, withering away and wasting my second chance at life. But if you play your cards right, immortal, I don't care about immortality. I lived my first life and I was miserable as I grew old. You and mom dying before me. You always said that you were going to die before me. That will be your final selfish act. But you died at 18 brothers. And I still lived decades after your death, trying to be what you would have become. I was never able to reach it. And I died full of regrets. I won't make the same mistake again. Concludes Kaminari, he wasn't asking for permission from the voice. He is simply informing his brother of his decision. I see. It seems like I won't be needed anymore then. Suddenly the whisper disappeared from his head. Just like that. The lingering presence was though it was no longer there. Kaminari is still contemplating that this truly might have been a hallucination all along. Simply a coping mechanism. But now he is decisive enough to make his own decisions. To Night Eye it seemed like Denki was standing still for a couple of minutes contemplating his decision. But in the end, Denki only breathes out a sigh of relief before smiling at Night Eye brightly. Ha 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 ha. Don't worry about such useless things Night Eye. We are all going to die one day, whether sooner or later, it doesn't matter. So I will stay a hero. Kaminari turns around to walk out of the door. Night Eye looks at Kaminari's back and in the end, only sighs at this. I see. Then I guess that L can't let you walk out now. It would just leave a bad taste in my mouth if I did that. Kaminari suddenly turns around and has a shocked look on his face. So, you are at Sundara. Immediately as Kaminari says that a vein pops up in Naitai's forehead. He is annoyed at Kaminari and says, What did you say you brat? I will kick you out of the agency if I hear one more rude word from you. Kaminari snickers slightly at this and says, Sure. Sure. Night Eye on the other hand, interlocks his hands and leans them on the table, trying to hide his smile. Tomorrow comes around, and Kaminari officially starts his internship. Kaminari POV, as I arrive at Naitai's agency, I am a little worried on the inside. After all, I never expressed on the outside what I am thinking on the inside. But I haven't heard the whisper's voice since yesterday. I even called him out, but he didn't answer. Well, I guess it was a mental hallucination after all. I just overcame my problem, I guess. Well, I have resolved my thoughts on the matter. It doesn't matter if I die while chasing my goal. I obviously won't seek death, that would be counterproductive. But I am no longer scared of death. Brother was always scared of death, he was too burdened with it and I knew it. Hey, I guess I am better than him at some things. I am fully in my blue costume which looks a lot like Superman's except the whole red underwear on the outside. That would be kinda lame and weird to wear for Rayal. Also, I am not hiding my face with my hero costume, but I use a slight electric static and my hair is flowing upward like some super scion. Centipede and Bubble Girl, meet me in the hallway and Bubble Girl says, Are you nervous about your first ever patrol? A little, I answer her truthfully. After all, some Nomu might decide to attack me. I am a little worried about that. 
I did fight the Nomu during the USJ, so that might have AFO pay attention to me and seek me out to steal my cork or something like that. The patrol is simple, we just greet people and take photos with some kids. Quite a bit of people recognized me from the sports festival, so I even gave a couple of autographs. Aw, help me! I was pulled out of my thoughts as a person yelled out loud. It seemed to be a female voice. I immediately used my lightning mode and went after the scream. When I arrived there, I just saw a man with the upper body of a crab and the lower body of a human robbing a woman. I just appear behind the man and clasp the back of his head. BZZZZT, I instantly knocked him out. What Kaminari did would usually be considered illegal, since he doesn't have a hero's license. But now this was all within his right, as he was in his hero costume and technically under the supervision of a hero. He looks at the smoking half-crab man on the ground. Weak, also he looks weird as hell. Ponders Kaminari, his mind wandering a little as Bubble Girl reprimands him for walking in a situation like that recklessly. Sorry, my body just moved on its own says Kaminari uncomfortably. Obviously, it was a lie, he isn't the hero type at all. His body would run away from a dangerous situation, rather than approach it. Bubble Girl was about to criticize him some more, but she stopped once she heard that. Sigh, okay. But don't do this anymore or I will have to report it to Night Eye next time, says Bubble Girl. I will need to keep an eye on him, or he might get hurt during all this. Then the cops come and arrest the half-crab man. They offer the woman to come and testify against the man. But she says that she won't testify against her husband. So this was a domestic abuse case. In the end, she just got a protection order from the police against her husband and then left to do her job as an exotic dancer. Once Kaminari heard this, he couldn't help but be a little surprised. Just a small incident like this and the story behind it is complicated. Not everything is as black and white as it seems. Two days later and Kaminari gains a lot of experience during his patrols. First, he learned that everything isn't as simple as it seemed and second, not everything can be solved by beating it up. He did a lot of minor things like helping a cat get off a tree, help a lost kid find his parents and many other things like that. Of course, every time Kaminari did a heroic act, it was accompanied by a dramatic entrance and a memorable goodbye. He and Bubble Girl have also built a good enough partnership. He buys her machi, and she doesn't report his little hero moments to Night Eye. Not that he did anything that he shouldn't do, it's just the embarrassing moments. Currently, he and Bubble Girl are in Night Eye's office. The man stares down at both of them with a hard look and says, Okay, recently we have had a shortage of patrol heroes in Hosu due to a certain new villain dubbed as the Hero Killer. Kaminari immediately guesses where this is going. He wanted to avoid something like this at all costs, but it seemed like it was impossible for him if he wanted to keep walking down his hero career. But on the outside, he still kept a calm look on his face. Night Eye, on the other hand, noticed Kaminari's slight shift. But he dismissed it as Kaminari thinking about the future that he had told him about. The one where Kaminari will be brutally killed by a villain. Hopefully, the League of Villains doesn't target me specifically, or that would suck, complains Kaminari internally. He has changed the timeline a little too much to be comfortable but he still will be prepared for any challenge they might throw at him. Also, he has a bunch of hidden cards. He would like to see how they work against the villains now. Now, I want you both to be careful and not enter a dark alleyway or something like it, without at least five to ten other heroes backing you up. Warns Night Eye. Am I understood? Both Kaminari and Bubble Girl nod at that. This is a little too dangerous in Kaminari's opinion, but no one else knows that Hosu will be flooded with Nomu's soon enough. Oh, Kaminari calls out Night Eye. Kaminari turns around confused. Night Eye smiles slightly and turns his laptop around. There are countless emails stacked up. They were all thank you emails from the people Kaminari helped during these days. I have gotten nothing but supportive emails from the people you have helped. Some even asked for some fan t-shirts and merchandise to be made after you. Keep up the good work. Kaminari is surprised at that. But in the end, he nods with a smile on his face. Later on, as the night comes about, both Kaminari and Bubble Girl are in their hero costumes and currently riding a train to Hosu. Have you thought about some new cool entrances? Asks Bubble Girl amusingly. Kaminari looks at her, he has his hero costume on, which is like a Superman costume except without the red underwear, and on his chest there is a lightning bolt instead of the S sign. Hey Bubble Girl, don't say it like that. You make it sound like I look lame in those, complains Kaminari with mock embarrassment. Bubble Girl chuckles a little at that. But it's true though especially when you do it in the bathroom mirrors. I get secondhand embarrassed just from looking at them. Kaminari's face pales at that and he grabs Bubble Girl's hand. 
She looks at him questionably. If you are about to confess your feelings about me, then the answer is no. I am not interested. Ha! Huh. Kaminari is confused by that on the outside. Never mind that. What I am concerned about is you not telling anyone about me doing that in the bathroom. Buy me some machi, and you have yourself a deal, says Bubble Girl as a smirk appears on her face. Kaminari is not impressed by this and says, Some hero you are, blackmailing an underage child. Heh. Bubble Girl snorts at that. Way to overplay things. So what about you then, Bubble Girl? Did you find any boyfriend already or did you get rejected once again? Says Kaminari mischievously. He can see Bubble Girl flinch as if she was hit with a cannonball. I, I, I haven't H had the time recently to do that. Stutters Bubble Girl in nervousness and embarrassment. Heh. Kaminari gets a mischievous smile on his face. He then starts whispering words that would make Bubble Girl get a metaphorical arrow to the heart. No boyfriend. Lonely forever. Will die al dash om Suddenly an explosion rockets the train and Kaminari looks out of the train's window and sees Hosu in chaos. Immediately he turns to Bubble Girl who is also serious now. Permission to use my quirk and lethal force if necessary? Asks Kaminari. Permission denied. Says Bubble Girl. Surprising Kaminari as he turns and stares at her. Why? He asks with a tone to his voice that wouldn't allow Bubble Girl to avoid the question. Take me with you. Only then will you get permission to use both lethal force and your quirk if necessary, says Bubble Girl, her expression very serious at this. Kaminari frowns slightly, as she will only be dead weight to him. But in the end, he just sighs and turns his back at her. Climb on top. She climbs piggyback and lightning crackles around Kaminari. Slightly shocking Bubble Girl. BZZZZT Kaminari and Bubble Girl both disappear in a flash. Kaminari moves at top speeds around Hosu, his eyes moving around while trying to figure out where everyone and everything is. He isn't concentrated on finding the hero killer or Ida or anything like that. After all, even if he defeats the Darrow killer, he won't be able to take credit for it because it is unlikely to be public. As Kaminari is running, he sees a school bus being attacked by a Nomu. Immediately, he lets Bubble Girl land on the ground as he runs towards the Nomu. He can see that this Nomu can't even follow his movements, unlike the one during USJ. He casually just pulls the children first and then he kicks the Nomu on the back of its head. Bam! The creature's head is smashed on the ground and cracks appear on the pavement due to it. From others' perspective, this all happened in the blink of an eye. Kaminari then looks at the kids and gives them a confident smile and a thumbs up. Everything is gonna be alright now. For I am here in a flash. The kids look scared as they point behind Kaminari. There are two Nomus behind him. With a smile still on his face, Kaminari turns around and grabs the Nomu's head with his hands. Bomb! And plummets them on the ground, he turns to the kids and does a thumbs up once again. Well then children, if you are ever in danger, simply yell out my name E, and I will be there in a flash. BZZZZT he grabbed Bubble Girl once more. After all, he can't use his quirk without a supervisor nearby. That is a law, and it can't be altered for only him. It doesn't take long for Kaminari to find another Nomu terrorizing some other people. It seemed like he was terrorizing some college girls. Kaminari drops Bubble Girl once more and then grabs the Nomu by the side of the head and bangs them on the wall. Bomb! It wasn't really the hit that did the true damage. It was Kaminari frying all of the Nomu's brains. He is doing this because he knows what they are and what they would do. Kaminari then looks around and sees the young girls scared. He approaches them, and he sees that they seem scared. So he smiles and reassuringly says, Hello there. My name is Flash and I am a hero. Are any of you hurt or in need of medical help? The girls shake their heads and Kaminari smiles. I see then that is good. Call the police, and they will come to take care of it. BZZZT he disappears once again and garbs Bubble Girl, immediately running towards the next people he should rescue. Next to save is an old woman, Kaminari drops Bubble Girl, and he sees that the Nomu is about to hit her. But he intervenes and cuts off the Nomu's arm. Crack. But suddenly he sees that some debris is about to fall on the old woman. He also understands that if he goes to help her, then he will most likely be really struck by the big debris himself. If he goes at his top speeds, he might be able to make it, but he would crash into the old woman and kill her. For a split second, he truly speculates to go and help the old woman. But at that split second, he understands just how dumb that would be on his part. He would be giving his life for someone else. Something he wouldn't like to do. But he still acts like he is going to as he moves at speeds just enough to avoid the rubble. 
Boom, the rubble crashes on the ground and the blood of the old woman sprays on Kaminari's face. Nu! Yells Kaminari as he falls on his knees. This reaction, even he isn't sure if he is faking it. He did just let someone die after all. And the thoughts in his head weren't exactly pain-ridden. They were coldly logical, even he wonders if he likes those thoughts. That is how Kaminari spends the rest of the night. Helping people and being seen as much as he could. He also made it seem easy by the ways he was taking out Nomus. Of course, some accidents happen and Kaminari couldn't save everyone. But he wasn't bothered by that at all after some time. After all, it was better for some random people dying than him. At least that is what he thought to console himself. He did let someone's sister, mother, grandmother, and parent die. That is the truth of the situation and he can't deny the truth. Still, though he had a moderate state of mind, he appeared to me more absent-minded around others to sell the whole thing. People immediately assumed that seeing innocent people die had shocked Kaminari. He was currently outside of the office of some police officers when a woman with a bunny tail and ears walked in. She was still in her hero costume. He immediately recognized the woman. She is Maruko number six hero. She suddenly stops and looks at Kaminari. Yo, their kid. Whatcha doing? Asks Maruko Kaminari POV. As I looked at Mirko, I couldn't help but contemplate that I would like to do with her for a one-night stand. Though I know that our difference in age and Mirko's personality, that is unlikely to ever happen. I can't help it but decide to play as prey against her. So I look at my hands, clench them in a fist, and sigh. Mirko, number seven hero, I must say. Did they bring you here to cheer me up? Her face winces slightly as I say that. Yes, that is bullseye then. In the end, I get up and walk past her. Don't worry. I am okay. I saved a lot of people today. I go to the water dispenser and pick up a plastic cup from the side and see that my hand is actually still shaking as I fill the cup with water. Damn, I am not even faking this one. I guess I am still in shock. Well, it is logical, with so many unpredictable deaths happening around me. I truly understood just how fragile humans are. I feel a hand on my shoulder and Mirko's voice. It's okay. You can't save everyone. No one is perfect. I don't say anything at that, but suddenly I feel a tug behind me and Maruko hugs me, bringing my face to her chest. Ha! Huh. I hear her slightly surprised voice as this happens. She probably expected me to be embarrassed or something. I just straighten up and see that she is shorter than me, even though she is standing on the tips of her fingers. I put my arm around her waist and bring her body closer to mine, and use my other hand to clasp her chin. Immediately I can see that she is embarrassed. I don't let her analyze the situation as I bring her lips closer to mine. I lean down and kiss her cheek. That is how you embarrass someone. I tell her. And as if on cue, she blushes heavily. I clasp her cheek as I lean backward and with a sweet smile on my face say, I love you Mirko. She is left in shock and I continue saying. And that is how you deal a critical hit. I then start walking away with a smile on my face. I am all calmed down now. I leave Mirko behind and at the corner I see Bubble Girl looking at me with a frown on her face. I smile and wave at her and get closer to her. Are you some super playboy or something? She asks me, and I just smile and wink. No, I read it from a manga, I say as I touch her shoulder. The playful smile still on my face, but she doesn't seem to be affected by it at all now. Wow, that makes the whole situation lame now, exclaims Bubble Girl. Bah ha 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 ha. I can't help it as I laugh at that. The internship week passes and everyone is back in school. They all talk about the experiences that they had, and I also make up some shit. Honestly, talking to their experiences is kind of boring, especially when Shoto isn't even saying what really happened and there is a video on TubeU about the whole stain incident, and also a video of his last statement before he was caught. So you truly didn't do anything too exciting? Then, asks Momo as she looks at me with a curious look. Unlike Canon, this time she wasn't under the celebrity hero the one which would be useless to remember. She was under the dragon hero Ryukyu. I believe she currently is the number 13 hero. Yeah, I went to Naitai's office. Quite nice in there and learned a lot of things from it. I tell her as I lean down and smile. I can see Mina looking at me with a strange look in her eyes that makes me feel awkward. I guess one exciting thing did happen. But I can't exactly talk about it. I say to Momo, and she nods at this, understanding the boundaries. Some things just can't be said in public. I will probably tell her if we go on a date once more. I will tell her about my trauma of being unable to save people and such. Also, it seems like her parents aren't around a lot, so once we get into a relationship I must isolate her from her friends, parents, and such. After that, 
She will be only mine. I will be the shoulder to cry on, and I will be her pillar. Because she will have nothing else to rely on, parents can be troublesome. If I do something bad, then they will convince about what is better for her. I know how these things go. Parents always stuff their nose in their children's situation. Well, I wouldn't be a father like me too, I just let my kids do whatever the hell they wanted later in their life. But by then they didn't even talk to me. Wow, really? Exclaims Mina out of nowhere, breaking me out of my thoughts. I can see it that, by the look on her face, she has nothing to contribute to the conversation and only wants to interrupt mine and Momo's conversation. But in the end, I smile at her politely and nod in confirmation. Yep, it was honestly a little scary, but that is all I can say about it. We continue that conversation about what we learned during our internships. That is when we hear that Shoto, Ida, and Midoriya were involved with the hero killer. Mineta asks some questions, but Shoto answers by saying that Endeavor saved them. Which to me, it's obvious what happened. Because I know from the story, I am not the best detective around to figure things out with so little information. I come through the door like a hero. Comes All Might's declaration as he opens the door. Like always, he startles me a little by doing that. Follow me to playing ground gamma. Fwash. And he blasts off. Oh, I also forgot. He startles me again as he returns. Don't forget. To wear your hero uniforms. Fwash. He then runs off again. Honestly, the way he talks so loudly at the beginning of each of his sentences is a way to make people pay attention to him and express dominance. While he does that intentionally or instinctively is kinda unknown. Some people train to do it and some are born with it. To me, that is a useless thing as I never wanted to be in a leadership position. Though I did know a guy who was sparingly good of raising his voice in a situation to make everyone listen to him. But leadership positions are troublesome. Over 90% of CEOs suffer from depression. I do not want any of that. But I guess in this world I will have to be a little... loud. After that, we put on our hero costumes and I look at Momo. Damn, she is really developing well. She will definitely be something else when she grows up. I can't wait for that. By then all the little mind games I have been playing on her would have been worth it. As we arrive at the racing grounds, we are split into teams of five. Also, Ground Gamma seems to be a construction site with many densely packed lanes, which makes it look like a labyrinth. In my group are the tail guy, Momo, Midoriya, Siro, Duct Tape Guy, and me. Quite a nice matchup to show who is the number one here. Start! Announced All Might, his voice coming from one of the many microphones on this ground. Immediately I enter, my body surpasses its limits. It actually casually breaks through them. The others can't even move as I start running, I don't go full out as my vision starts blurring and even my enhanced eyesight can keep up with it. Something strange about moving at such speeds as I do is that it feels like the laws of physics don't even affect you. I casually walk sideways in one of the pipes. I truly love this thing. Moving fast like this is amazing to me. It never gets old. It is a showing of the effort I put in this move. Of course, I win the race and after some praises from All Might, I settle down and smile a little at Momo's executed wave. After that class came to Aizawa with his homeroom class, he seems to be annoyed about someone. And as he enters the class, like usual, he counts how long it took all of us to get to our seats. Two seconds. You are getting better, is all Aizawa says, and it's as close as we will get to a compliment. The guy just can't give one, honestly, I am glad he is a hero because with his erasure quirk, he would be able to easily beat the likes of All Might and even me. He is also a hard counter against All for One. He can cancel his quirk and the ones that he had stolen. Now how do I get him to be at the fighting during the battle against All Might and All for One? It would, honestly, probably keep All Might in business even after the fight. But as far as I am aware, I also know that the villains know about Aizawa's quirk. So they definitely would do something to keep him at bay. All Might being kept in the game a little longer would make everything easier. He is like a cheat code in an RPG game, he will one-shot all of the future villains. From Overhaul and all those other shit stains, at least Night I wouldn't die by then. I need to put as many cards on my side now, it's no longer about canon, damn canon. I must keep a blanket of heroes around me as I grow into the number one spot. All of the dangerous situations I will be in need to be controlled. That is the only safe way to play this game. I might need to get a little involved with the other side of the board, but it doesn't matter. Kaminari. You did well in your internship, says Aizawa, suddenly pulling me off my thoughts. I nod at him and he goes through some other students congratulating and mostly criticizing them. Just like this, time flies fastly by and the end of June comes about. The midterm exams, 
and I didn't study for it at all. I was a college student in my last life, high school math is like playing games to me. Though I did place third in overall score, well, I might have forgotten some things from college. But I was only behind Momo and Ida. That kind of annoyed me a little, so I will put more effort into the next one and try to get the best score within the class. Kaminari POV. As the final week of June comes around, I spend it training my physical body. It doesn't matter that I am only third in grades against some prepubescent high school children. Damn that annoyed me, I ain't some damn loser to get beaten by them. I am currently in my living room doing some push-ups. I can see a puddle of sweat below me. I just need to do some more push-ups and my arm will give out. Though I think all of this, my mind still goes to another place. Damn it. I hate this. I know why I placed in third place because I didn't study at all for midterm exams or anything like that. I only revised when I was walking towards UA. This definitely sucks beyond measure. I mean, some 15-year-old kids beat me in junior high school level subjects. I still am not studying that much, mostly when I am in the bathroom. I want to be the best at everything and always be number one. But I know just how useless grades like this are. I do crazy calculations constantly in order to learn how to manage my ability. But that is where the problem comes. I am forgetting some things from my past life. Not things essential to me like physics and math, but things like language arts and some other things. I must be number one in these things, but at the same time they are all useless. I will forget them once I become an official hero anyway, this sucks. From what I remember, the next will be the teacher versus student trials. I wonder who they will put me against. Obviously, they will put me against a teacher that is a counter against me. So that means either All Might or Aizawa. Only those two amongst the teachers can really defeat me. All Might because he can beat me in raw power. Aizawa can use his quirk to disable mine and I am pretty much a normal person with a better physique than normal. But Aizawa will outclass me in all of their two, technique, intelligence, fighting experience, martial arts. And due to being a trained adult, he beats me in natural physical strength too. His items will help him easily win a fight against me. Mm. I see, then Aizawa will be the one most likely to be put against me. But with whom will I be in a team, Momo? Todoroki or someone else completely? This will definitely be quite important to me because I know clearly just how strong I have pushed my quirk to be. And I know my weakness is the best. Sadly, there isn't a lot I can do for most of them and I am already improving on the ones that I can. What terrifies me is that I can't improve and this is as good as I will get. I know that this is nowhere near enough. Those endgame powers, I am nothing against them. I will be surpassed by Midoriya and Shigaraki if I become stagnant and am satisfied with just what I have. One way to go about this is to improve my equipment and my hero suit. I know just how much of a difference that can make. But at the same time, I don't know what to improve on. I have the defense for my suit mainly down. I honestly just added some knives in hidden places in the suit. When I asked for this suit, my only requirement was that it doesn't hinder my quirk. My quirk is easy to disrupt by something like a suit. I didn't want any metal plates or any rubber to cover my suit because both would weaken my quirk usage. Weapons are okay though, though I need to think of some more moves, something like the railgun that I developed. That is a very lethal move and my trump card that I don't plan to use it too much. After all, it's pretty much my only hidden trump card. I look at the clock and see that it's almost midnight, so I sigh and get up. I need to take a shower and go to sleep now. I must get my 7 plus hours of sleep a day at least. I usually get 8 hours, but I have been unable to get those these last couple of days so I had to tire my body before going to sleep. The next day comes quickly, next week, and I immediately open my eyes minutes before the alarm rings. This is my internal alarm at work. I see that it is a little over 7 in the morning. By 8 I have to be at UA. Well, it doesn't matter, I always arrive early. By a couple of minutes. I pick up my phone and see that in the 1A group class on AppWhats that there are 18 new messages. I read through them and it's pretty much Momo creating a new study group for the people who have had some difficulty. I decided to join in and type on the group. Kaminari, yo. Good morning, I will join too. I will help you Momo. And I also need some help myself. Ha ha ha. After writing that I get up, put on the school uniform, brush my teeth, wash my face and set off for UA. As I arrive, I see Mina running along. She has a toast of bread in her mouth as she runs. I just look at her and say, Oi, no need to rush Mina, we are not going to be late. She stops and looks at me. Her chest goes up and down as she breathes heavily. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going to be late. Aizawa would chew off my head if that were the case. I laugh at that lightly. I always tell you to not stay till 2 a.m. You must get a healthy dose of 8 hours a day of sleep. That is the key to keeping a healthy body and mind. Mina just looks at me as I say that. She bites on her toast bread. Okay, so she is zoning me out. 
I flicked her forehead and berate her. Mina, listen to me. You are worrying me about this. Unhealthy habits like this can continue into adult life too. Do you want me to worry about you even when we are grown up? She blushes a little as I say that. Well, she is most likely thinking about marriage now that I talked about me worrying about her even during adulthood. Well, I did imply it a little. Though I plan to marry Momo, a little secret affair on the side wouldn't hurt anyone. Except Momo if she finds out. But she won't because I will just be doing my hero duties till late at night. Marriage is boring, and after 10 years smashing the same woman gets boring. Or maybe not, it wouldn't be good to be like I was in my past life. Uncaring for those around me. I had multiple wives because of this problem. Better keep it chill this time. Use my head, not my dong, to do the thinking. Still, that decision is too far in the future after all I am still a virgin in this body at least. But details like that don't matter at all. I see that Mina is still absent-minded and act like I don't know about what it is as I flick her forehead again. See, you are daydreaming because of the lack of sleep. Sigh, I sigh and pat her in the head. I worry about you, Mina. So please take care of yourself. As we arrive at the classroom, I go towards Momo to talk to her. Goo dash. Everyone in their seats. Comes Aizawa's nonchalant voice. I only sigh and wave at Momo as I go to my seat. In a week, the end of term exams will come about, remember to study says Aizawa, completely in his usual voice. The lessons go by quickly, and except for Midnight's very over-sexualized teaching methods, nothing interesting happens during class. Honestly, it feels more like my previous world high school now. Except for some special classes, the other ones are boring, I would rather spend this time training, but since I can't, I spend most of it contemplating ideas on how to use my quirk better. Still, lunchtime finally comes around, and Momo, Mina, Tape Guy, Tail Guy, and Jairu, I really should start remembering my classmates' names. Especially since I am the class president. Still, we are all sitting at the table when Momo starts by saying, Okay, the teacher said that we must learn trigonometry, derivatives. Momo continues speaking about what the teacher told us to learn. Damn, she really is serious about this stuff. Also, after thinking about it for a little bit, I remembered the names of my two male classmates sitting at the table, Ojiro and Siro. Now I must make sure to not forget them. Damn, that will be hard. They are just so forgettable, both physically and appearance-wise. Lunch ended, and Momo was still explaining to us what we had to learn. Damn, I guess she really is studious, no wonder I was placed behind her during midterms later on. We arrived at Momo's mansion and everyone else except me looked surprised. I just walk forward and press the bell button while everyone else is shocked by Momo's wealth. Just like so the week of studying passes. I look at the results of the written exam and sigh. First place, but it doesn't feel like an accomplishment at all. I spent way too much time studying for this. I don't even dare dream of being strong or good enough at using my quirk just by lying around. I might be slightly faster as an old, injured, and weakened All Might, so what? I am not gonna let myself be surpassed by Izuku, especially as he starts using the other quirks stored into one for all. Power isn't something that is given to me by doing nothing like Deku was. All Might could have found better users of all for one if he had just looked at other people. But I guess he saw himself in the quirkless Izuku, Expecting All Might to be smart and make the perfect decision all the time is unrealistic. He is only human after all. But Mirio with that power would have been a way better and truly terrifying choice. No one would be able to hit him as long as he can hold his breath and with his new floating quirk, he could have flown even while having Permanation Quirk on. Just that combination would make him absolutely terrifying. Then combine it with all the others plus his strong body, and you have a way more terrifying All Might. I mean even now I don't think I can beat Mirio, he can turn on his quirk, and as long as he predicts my attacks he would be able to beat me. Because even my instinct field wouldn't be able to sense Mirio and his punch if he was using his quirk. Damn, he is a really good counter against me, his quirk literally nulls most advantages I have against him. But at least I can run away from him if push comes to shove. And in a type of worst case scenario where all for one steals Mirio's quirk. In the end, though, it is unlikely for such a situation to happen. Because if it does, I am beyond being in trouble. Finally, we meet the teachers for the practical exam. I know that from the rumors going around that it will be robots like the entrance exam. But that isn't necessarily true this year, after all, not every year does the school, we will be having fights against teachers, says the raccoon principal. Or is he a rat? Honestly, I don't know most of the time what he even classifies as. Still, in the end, I listen to the teachers to explain things to me. I end up on the same team with Todoroki, both of us against Aizawa. A terrible matchup against us that is. Momo could create things, and after the process of creation, Aizawa could use his quirk on her. 
but it wouldn't destroy her already created items. But for me and Todoroki, that is a different scenario. He just looks at us and we become mediocre fighters at best. As mine and his fighting styles are concentrated around our quirks. Currently, both me and Todoroki are inside a city. He looks at me and asks, What is your plan, Kaminari? I give him a side glance at this. I guess he trusts me enough to make a plan. No, it's not trust in me, it is more like his trust in my skills. I guess finally being the best at everything in the class finally paid off. Todoroki POV. As I ask Kaminari that question, I see him contemplate it. Though I hate to admit it, he is good. I don't doubt that he can come up with a great plan. I mustn't let my pride decide my future. I learned at least this much when he beat me in the sports festival. I won't be able to become number one if I don't give it my all. Ah, got it, exclaims Kaminari suddenly. He then gets close to me and whispers quietly. I will use my body as a shield from his vision. You shoot ice or flames at him. As expected of Kaminari, he found a weakness in Aizawa's quirk within seconds. He then looks around and looks through the windows of the houses around us. We were in an urban neighborhood. TCH, there are no covers around us, says Kaminari once again saying something truly wise. If he had a blanket, that would also stop Aizawa's quirk. I can't help it as I look at him with a slightly amazed look on my face. He is impressive. I have my work cut out for me if I want to compete with someone like him. His quirk is strong and he is smart. He would be dangerous even without his quirk, but with it, he is terrifying. I don't think there are any UA students and neither most of the teachers who can beat him. I can count on one hand the teachers who would stand a chance against him. Kaminari closes his eyes and touches the small earplug in his ear. He frowns and whispers to me. Careful, he is around here. I heard footsteps. Okay. I tell him and try to create a small fire on my palm. But I can't. We are already in his range. Kaminari nods at this. Fwash. Suddenly... Bandage-looking accessories come towards us. Kaminari does a backflip and jumps off a wall, dodging Aizawa's bandage things. I tried to jump back too, but suddenly I felt something grab into my ankle and I looked down. Shit, he already grabbed onto me. Momo looks at the screen in front of her, and it shows Todoroki being grabbed by Aizawa's bandage-like weapons. Kaminari on the other hand has a calm look on his face as he jumps backward, but he still can't use his quirk as Aizawa is looking at him. But as he looks at Kaminari... Todoroki can now use his quirk, but before he can even do so, pow, Aizawa punches him on his chin, having Todoroki's brain hit the inside of his skull, and it knocks him out. One down, says Aizawa as he jumps towards Kaminari, who winces at this. Aizawa is the worst possible opponent for him to fight. The man pretty much takes away his quirk, but Kaminari also knows that as soon as the man blinks, he will have a chance to attack him by using his quirk. But during that time, he mustn't be midair, or he is pretty much useless anyway. Kaminari trusts Aizawa as a hero enough to have taken some countermeasures against him. So in the end, he takes out a knife from one of his hidden pockets in his hero costume. Aizawa uses his binding cloth to try and capture Kaminari now that he is midair. BZZZZT for one split second, Kaminari was able to use his quirk. So he used it by releasing a large amount of electricity hoping to capture Aizawa. He has a calm look on his and uses his bandages to dispel the electricity that comes towards him. But he also makes sure to have his eyes glued to Kaminari as his feet land on the ground. Unexpectedly, instead of running away so he can hopefully get out of Aizawa's vision, Kamari twirls his knife in a reverse grip and charges at his teacher. Aizawa smiles. This kid. He is something else. He knew that if he turned his back to me, he would have lost, so he chose to charge me. Unlike others who would be nervous after losing their quirks, he is completely calm. Denki gets close to him, dodging all of Aizawa's attacks with his restricting clothes. Once he is an arm's length away from, Kaminari POV. As I swing my knife at Aizawa, he has a calm look and I feel the cloth wrap all around me. Damn, seems like I got caught. Still, I have a calm look on my face and wait for the right moment, not giving anything away. Aizawa goes to punch me, but I bite the inside of my cheek till it draws blood and spit it towards his eyes. But even at such close range, he is able to dodge my attack. Smart, is all he says, I can see that it's his way of saying that I did good, and we were simply a bad matchup. But I have to use all of the power in my body to move while half restricted by the metal wire cloth. I stab my hand and blood spurts from it like a river and I swing towards his eyes, splashing blood in them. Come on now, I can't lose here at something like this. Todoroki was useless to me, so now I must do my best and win this by myself. BZZZT. 
That is when time slows down for me and I understand that I can now use my quirk. I use my lightning to rip through this metal cloth and attack Aizawa immediately. Electricity travels through his body as I grasp his face and notice that he was wearing rubber gloves and a rubber bodysuit under his clothes. The man falls on the ground knocked out and I fall on my back on the ground. Wincing slightly as I see my bleeding hand and I take out a bandage from one of the hidden pockets in my suit and bandage it up. General POV Momo looks at Kaminari through the monitor and can't help but admire his willpower. He stabbed his hand without a second thought just to win this test. An unknown feeling settles down on her heart as she sees that. Later, Kaminari returns to the monitor room and looks at Momo. A calm look on his face as he mentions for her to come closer. I need something, HM? What would he need me for? Contemplates Momo, but she still decides to follow him and look at the next fight. Suddenly, as they are both outside out of their classmates' view, Momo feels herself be pushed against the wall. Kaminari kisses her, and she can feel the aftertaste and the metallic taste of blood in his mouth, his knee pushing between her legs. Before she can even understand what happened, Kaminari separates the kiss and smiles at her. Momo feels a tingle run down her spine as she sees this, her face flushed, her mind in shambles, and she felt like a defenseless girl in front of Kaminari. Sorry, I couldn't stop myself, is all he says as he starts walking away. See you tomorrow, Momo. Later on, Momo and Mina are on the same team on the practical exam, and due to Momo not being concentrated on the exam, she and Mina both fail the exam. Kaminari POV, I lie down on the medical bed, thinking about the kiss I shared with Momo. I had to make a move, she was never gonna make a move at the pace she was going. Even when I have given her enough clues and such, she is too naive to understand them. So I had to make the move myself and take charge. Well, I don't mind. I know that she likes me. So there isn't anything to be nervous about on my part. Still, now that I have made the first move I can't stop now and act like I am not interested or it will give the wrong message. I was planning for her to make the first move that way I wouldn't have to work too hard. But it seems like that won't be it. Sigh, this is so troublesome. I say out loud. Ha! Huh. I hear Izuku's confused voice come from the bed next to me. I honestly don't pay that much attention to him now. He is about up there with Siro the tape guy. Things are so different from the canon timeline now, even Ochako has a crush on me. Though I won't reciprocate her feelings, I better stick with Momo. Because if I try to get them all, I will end up with none. You okay? Kaminari-san? Asks the seaweed hair next to me. Can't the annoying little guy just let me think about my things? Yeah, Izuku. I am okay. Just thinking out loud. I answer him with a bored voice. Your fight against Aizawa sensei was amazing, says the walking crying machine. Holy shit he is annoying. Can't he just get the hint that I don't want to talk? Yeah, I had to think outside the box to win that fight. What is your daily training routine Kaminari, San? Asks the annoying bastard again. This day is gonna be long. Some of the other classmates go shopping, but Kaminari excuses himself, saying that he couldn't come. He has other things going on so he decides to not go there. Even though he knew that Midoriya is likely to meet Tamura this time too. What he is concerned about is the villain league deciding to attack him right there, after all, unlike the original time, he was the one who fought Nomu and held the creature back relatively easy. They might decide that getting rid of him would be better than letting him live and become dangerous. Of course, this is only an assumption from Kaminari, as he doesn't have any idea of what the villains might be thinking or planning. But he still would like to keep himself safe and not fight in a situation that is unpredictable and disadvantageous. He knows best what his weaknesses are, so he will not allow people to exploit them. If he decides to fight them there and uses electricity outside of his body, then he will be killing more civilians that villains. Kaminari's quirk is a lethal one, and fighting in a crowded place is not good for him. It doesn't take long for the police to announce that something happened in the mall. So they closed it down, and they also made a special police force to stop the villain league's future actions. Like the one that happened at the mall, in which Izuku was in a pinch against Tamura Shigaraki. Kaminari didn't pay too much attention to this. Though, as he was busy training with different weights on his body and using a generator to try to increase his electricity storage ability. Summer comes around, Kaminari sits on his desk. He thinks of his relationship with Momo, which hasn't gone anywhere. He planned a lot, but he didn't expect Momo to be so socially inept. But soon an opportunity will come for him to show his love for her. He keeps contemplating this, that is, until Aizawa comes and explains. We will be changing places where we will be going for summer camp. Kaminari wakes up immediately, and his attention is fully on. 
a serious look on his face as his eyes are unusually cold. That means that we can't prevent which the initial information would reach. Aizawa looks at Kaminari. In the end, he just shrugs and admits. Yeah. Also, we will be looking more into the issue. Kaminari nods at this. That is when Bakugo looks at Deku and mocks. So you just let a villain threaten you? Kaminari acts like he didn't notice it. But he agreed with Bakugo. If he used one for all 100% and punched Shigaraki, the guy would have plastered in a wall. Even less to keep him alive if he wants. So many ways to survive that situation. In a fight Shigaraki would have lost against Midoriya if he didn't immediately kill him with the sneak attacks. But he panicked and didn't think things through calmly. Normally this would be normal, but Izuku is looking to become a hero now. So Kaminari 100% agrees with Bakugo, even if he doesn't express it on the outside. Hey, we aren't allowed to use our quirks in public. So he couldn't do anything, exclaims Toru, waving her invisible arms around. Aizawa looks at her with a bored look on his face, not saying anything. Kaminari also has a bored look on his face as he thinks about the soon-to-come attack from the Villains League. Mina looks at him, seeing the bored look on his face. But she knows that Kaminari never is someone to be idle. He must be thinking of something. She wonders what he could be thinking. His thoughts would usually be in a disarray in this situation, since it can be extremely dangerous, and it can develop in many unpredictable ways. But strangely, he is as calm as he can be. He has never felt like this, this felt strange even to him as it is like his feelings are being dulled. And so, as the semester comes to a closure, Kaminari noticed Shinso following Elizua and smiled. That guy's quirk is simply too useful to not be trained into an anti-villain tool. Still, though, they go to the parking lot on the school grounds. The buses are mostly used to move through the school grounds, from one part to the other. That is how big the school grounds are, it has to be for the crazy training grounds that there are. As the class president, Kaminari had some leading to do. And he did what anyone in power does. Leave it to the subordinates, aka Momo, to do the boring work. Bahahaha. Huh, what is this? Class A is supposed to be better than Class B? But you still had some failing students, says Monoma from Class B laughing at Class A. But sadly for him, no one was even paying attention to him as they just talked amongst themselves. That is when a girl with orange hair tied in a ponytail, she has shining blue eyes. She just karate chops Monoma in the neck, knocking him out, picking him by the back of his neck, and dragging him toward their bus. Ibra, a girl with vine-like green hair, looks at Kendo as she drags Monoma away. She is quite scary. Yeah, agrees another student who speaks broken Japanese. Kaminari doesn't notice any of this. His mind is into other things. But as soon as Class 1A gets on the bus, everyone starts talking amongst each other. Kaminari, did you see those Class 1B girls? So many to choose from. Announces Mineta as drool comes out of his mouth. He and Kaminari are sitting on the same row of seats so he couldn't get rid of the pervert. So he nods at the little guy. Yeah, I saw them, confirms Kaminari. But I don't know any of them personally. So I am not sure if they are attractive to me. Ha! Huh. Mineta looks at him confused. Kaminari only smiles at him gently, of course. He said what he did for the girls on the bus to hear. He knows that everyone's initial impression is on their appearance. Like someone who has face tattoos us unhirable. Kaminari can't help but contemplate if having face tattoos is something like a rapper's pledge that they can't go back from. His eyes wander as he looks at Momo and sees her talking with Jairu. I wonder what this test will be, wonders the earphone jack girl. Probably some field training. Most likely a way on which we will improve our quirks, says Momo with a thoughtful look on her face. Jairu smiles smugly and goes to whisper something to Momo. This causes the latter to blush and look at Kaminari. And no! It's nothing like that. Later on, they arrive at a rest stop. Kaminari takes his hands out of his pockets and looks at Momo. Be careful. She blushes at this. Boom! Before any of the Wana students can react, an avalanche of earth hits them, and it pushes them away. Immediately, Kaminari uses his lightning armor mode. Electricity crackles around his body and his hair stands up. He runs amongst the rubble as it pushes everyone away. It seemed like everything was stuck in time as it has almost stopped moving. Kaminari's wonder through the field. He sees Momo and grabs her in a princess carry. But at the same time, he kicks the dirt to create a cover where Mina or anyone else of the classmates could see them. He deliberately jumps off the earth and separated himself from his classmates. He also sees Aizawa is still calmly staring at the students. The earth avalanche hasn't even touched him. 
Kaminari doesn't need to be told if this is a villain attack. He knows who holds a quirk like this. Kaminari uses his quirk's mobility to maneuver himself midair and land on the ground. With Momo still in his arms, he lets her down and acts like he didn't notice her blushing up a storm. You okay? He asks while looking around for any other attack. Yes, she nods, coming back to reality. This is not the time for such thoughts. But neither of them has too much time to think as they are surrounded by monsters made out of earth. Momo, long sword, requests Kaminari casually, without a trace of panic in his voice. Momo immediately understands what he means. Electricity is almost useless against them since they are made out of earth. So she makes a long sword and gives it to him. With the long sword in his hands, electricity crackles around him, and he disappears in a flash. Flash! Before Momo could even see what happened, the next thing she sees is the earth beasts cut down to pieces. Kaminari turns around and picks up Momo in a princess carry without even asking her. Wah! Momo is surprised by this. But Kaminari has a concentrated look on his face and says, We must reunite with the others. This is the fastest way. The way he says it makes it sound more like he was informing her of his decision. Rather than, as he reaches the others, that is when Aizawa's voice is heard from a speaker. Check. Check. Okay, this is the 1A test. You will have to reach the lodge on the other side of the forest. So figure out the rest by yourself. Everyone is confused by this. But Kaminari knows what this means. And he decides to take charge of the situation. Okay. Everyone. Listen to me. Ha. Huh. Bakugo looks at Kaminari with an annoyed look on his face. Who the hell put you in charge, Sparkles? See, come on now, catch on. Now is not the time to fight, says Izuku nervously. Shut the hell up, Deku. Screams Bakugo, he doesn't need Deku to tell him what to do. BZZZZT, the sound of lightning crackling was heard as everyone looked at Kaminari. And they saw a cold look on his face. He looks straight at Bakugo and says, You either do as I say, or I knock you out and carry you to the ledge. Bakugo doesn't say anything after that. He knows that Kaminari doesn't make nonsensical threats. He will really do what he says, so he decided to not edge his classmate on anymore. Anyway, me, Todoroki, and Kirishima will be at the front. Bakugo will be at the rear, the others look to the sides. But Bakugo will replace Todoroki after a while, and we will continue the circle of exchange so we don't get tired, explains Kaminari, also pointing and making some other teams that will replace each other, so everyone has some time to rest. Everyone okay with that? Everyone nods, even a reluctant Bakugo. Hours later, the sun is about to set, and the Lodge Aizawa and the Wild Pussycats heroes are waiting for Class 1A to arrive when... Boom! The forest in front of them explodes and a large dust cloud appears. Damn it! And Bakugo's scream is heard. Seems like they are already here, announces Aizawa. They did it quite fast. Tiger, the muscular man in the Wild Pussycats hero team, is quite impressed by the young heroes in training. Aizawa smirks. Well, they are quite exceptional. Though the homeroom teacher won't say it out loud. This class is quite possibly the best UA has ever had. At least he is sure that they are the best class he has had. And he is sure that quite a lot of them will make it to the top 10 at least. There is Midoriya, Bakugo, Todoroki, Kirishima, and Kaminari. Those five are the ones in his mind who will make it to the top 10 in the hero rankings. Boom! One more explosion is heard and the forest in front of the lodge bursts apart as Kaminari charges ahead with a little tired look on his face. While Bakugo and Todoroki were using their quirks to try and keep the others safe. We arrive now, losers! Yells Bakugo while looking at the people behind him. He turns around and looks in front of him. He can only see Kaminari's back. Which pisses him off. He doesn't like always having to be in his shadow. How the hell am I gonna be number one by just being in his shadow? Todoroki, on the other hand, has a calm look on his face as he looks at Kaminari. He saw something that he didn't expect today. He saw that Kaminari had a major weakness on his quirk. He hadn't used any long-range attack with the others around him. He only covered his limbs with electricity and he punched and slashed at the earth beasts that way. That was how he figured out that Kaminari can't control the electricity outside of his body. Not too big of a weakness, but something to take into account next time he fights him. Kirishima has a smile on his face. He is in his Red Riot unbreakable form. He also has bashed through multiple earth beasts and was able to keep up with Bakugo and Todoroki, even if they had more destructive quirks. Midoriya looks at Kaminari and the backs of the others. He can feel tears almost come out of his eyes. I need to train harder to be able to keep up with them, 
At 5% one for all, he couldn't keep up at all with them, as they had gotten way better than they were during the sports festival. Because while he had grown, the others had grown too. Will I ever be able to catch up to them this way? No. I know I will. I have one for all, the cork that all might use to become the symbol of hope. I will do the same too. As Midoriya was hyping himself up, Aizawa shrugs and tells the rest of 1A, eat. And this is the last time the food will be prepared for you. Next time, it's all up to you. After that, the students all go and eat the food prepared for them by the wild pussycats. This is so good! exclaims Kirishima, which causes Pixie Bob, the pretty blonde hair member of the wild pussycats, to smile in satisfaction. She then starts gushing over Kaminari, Izuku, Todoroki, Bakugo and Kirishima. Kaminari didn't pay any attention to this 31-year-old woman who is looking for the attention of a man. Instead, he is thinking about the attacks that should happen soon. He can only plan for the worst and hope for the best. He now understands the way things are working now. Changes are inevitably going to happen and the best he can do is survive. If the worst comes to play. Later on, the class goes to the hot springs, Kaminari has a towel around his midsection, and he closes his eyes with a hot towel covering them. Hey! Do you think he is sleeping? Asks Mineta. Shoji just looks at him and transforms one of his arms into a mouth to say, No, I don't believe so. He must always be on guard. We are talking about Kaminari here, you know. Hmm. Mineta contemplates something and then smiles as a malicious look appears on his face. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I must go and climb the wall that separates man from heaven. Ajiro looks at him weirdly as Mineta starts climbing the wall. Kaminari's ear twitches for a split second. What he is doing currently is training. He is trying to create something like catching electromagnetic signals. He picked the wooden bucket that was floating in the water around him and threw it. Fwash! The wooden bucket flew with impeccable precision and hit Mineta in the head as he was climbing the wall. Bomb! Ah! Mineta screams as he starts falling to the ground. Kaminari, you bastard! Shoji just nods at this as expected of Kaminari. Perfect aim. Everyone else looks at Shuji weirdly. When did he become such a diehard fan of Kaminari? At this time, the kid Koda is on the wall of the hot springs and looks at Mineta with disdain. He is there to keep perverts like Mineta away. But accidentally he turns around and looks at the girl's side immediately he is surprised and starts falling. Oi, the kid is gonna fall! Yells out Kirishima. BZZZT. But before Koda can hit the ground Kaminari catches him by the back of his shirt in the blink of the eye and smiles. Yo there kid, you should be more careful. Koda huffs and gets off his grasp, starting to walk away. Kaminari just shrugs at this, knowing his backstory already and that the kid hates heroes because his parents were heroes and died. Later on, as everyone goes to their lodges to sleep, Mandalay, wild pussycat team, the brown-haired girl, approaches the guys group and looks at Kaminari. Thanks for helping Koda, as she says that she has a small blush on her face. Damn it, Kaminari. He is even better with older women. Whines Mineta, like always girls gush at Kaminari even when he doesn't seem to be trying. Everyone can see how Momo, Mina, and many other girls look at him with love-struck eyes. Even the Denso Chaco has a crush on him. No problem. My body just moved on its own, says Kaminari with a gentle smile on his face again lying about his body moving on its own. But he can also see that the blush on Mandalay's face is fake. What could she be up to? Wonders Kaminari. He isn't some teenage boy who thinks that a woman like Mandalay, a woman with an experience like her would gush at him like this unless she has alternative thoughts. Still, he can only sigh internally. Hopefully it's nothing too troublesome from her. The next day comes about, and as everyone is gathered Aizawa looks at the students in front of him with his usual tired look in his eyes. Good morning. Anyway, let's get straight to the point. Today, we will begin quirk training. But sir, haven't we already been training quirks? What is so different now? Asks Mina with a curious look on her face. As he sees that most of the students also seem to be of the same mindset Aizawa points at Bakugo and says, Katsuki, what was the distance you threw your ball during the quirk apprehension test on the first day of school? Ha! Huh. Bakugo is confused by the question but he still answers calmly. 705.2 meters, Aizawa nods at that. While Bakugo is rude to most of the people, he respects Aizawa. He has seen the man's will and how far he is willing to go. He saw that clearly during the USJ incident. Okay then, throw it again, says Aizawa, giving Bakugo another ball. Bakugo takes the ball and throws it with his full power. Die! 
Boom! As the ball flies away, Aizawa shows the students the distance measure. It says 710 meters. Better than the cork apprehension test, but not by much. While you have improved your stamina, strength, and cork usage, you haven't improved the powers of your corks too much, explains Aizawa. His gaze stops at Kaminari for a split second as he says that. Well, accept him, thinks Aizawa, as he has already seen some camera footage of Kaminari training his cork on the school training fields even after everyone else went home. In comparison to the others, Kaminari was different, he trained way more than the others. Because while the kids his age went around to rest, sleep, or such, he was training, training, and even more training, and so the cork training begins. Kaminari is the person Aizawa is paying most attention to as the kid is tied to a giant generator of electricity. From what Aizawa had seen, Kaminari's usage of his cork is already phenomenal. He has pushed his electrification corks to a whole new level never thought possible before. So they had decided to train his reserves. Kaminari can already store up to hundreds of millions of volts. But he has expressed his desire to want to have a larger reserve. And after that, he has plans to study and see if he can control the electricity outside of his own body. Okay, that was Aizawa's simple answer to all that. Anyway, let's start your training. A generator half the size of the mountain is put up and Kaminari moves inside which is a metallic room. Aizawa already gave him instructions on how to manage something like this. So Kaminari closes his eyes and says, Computer, turn up discharge to 100 million volts. Psst, the huge current of electricity runs through the room and Kaminari is hit by all of it. Even though he is not hurt on the outside, he can feel his body feel bloated and heat up. 203 million volts is when the heat on his body becomes unbearable and he yells out. Stop! The electricity immediately stops. Kaminari winces slightly as a part of his skin on his arm is charred. But he doesn't mind now that he has access to equipment like this. He can rein his storage and output, unlike home where he could only go to sneak into sports stadiums to train. He knows that his storage is like a muscle and the more he trains it the better it gets. Though he guesses that there must be a limit. While it is physical as his body will either start showing adverse effects when storing too much or just the storage growth having a real max capacity. Now is the time to train and push past my limits. Contemplates Kaminari resolutely. He has a lead against Izuku, who will get many quirks from one for all. He plans to keep that lead against the OFA user. He will never settle for number two because number two is just the best loser, meaning he will still be a loser no matter what unless he is number one. So evening comes around and it's time for the students themselves to cook. Kaminari urges his peers to work together. Whoa, look how good at cutting Bakugo is. That is so surprising, exclaims Ochako in surprise. But it was true as Bakugo was cutting like a chef would and doing so precisely and fast. Hey, what is so surprising, huh? Exclaims Bakugo with his usual raging look on his face. It's just you losers being bad at everything that you do. Kaminari smirks at this and he also starts cutting some vegetables for the curry. Whoa! Kaminari too! exclaims Siro, tape guy. As even Kaminari was cutting like Bakugo, they had their little silent competition going on already. Whoa! They are so uber talented. I hate it! exclaims Mineta with a despairing look on his face. How will I ever get girls like this? That's what you were worried about? yells the rest of the class in annoyance especially the girls, as they were glad that Kaminari isn't like Mineta and he won't use his good looks and talent to get girls. At least that is from their perspective of him. While the others were talking like that, Kaminari was enjoying himself too and doing some silly things like shocking a little bug to death and then back to life. Whoa, that is cool, says Aijiro. Oi, don't harm a creature needlessly, reprimands Momo. But as she does so, Kaminari sees that Midoriya has gone away, from what he remembers. He should have gone to find Kodo as he isn't here. Then this is the night, thinks Kaminari as he gets up and apologizes. Sorry. Guts. But I will go and bring Midoriya back. He runs off already a plan in his mind and what he will do when the villains attack. Three days pass. And there is no villain attack in sight. Kaminari frowns at this slightly, as he is currently training with his quirk. Did I remember it wrong? He has been here for many years now, so him not exactly remembering some things isn't a big deal. He would be okay with that alternative. Because if he remembers correctly and the villains didn't attack, it means something even worse. They have possibly changed their plan, concludes Kaminari slightly nervous at this. He now knows that they must have a countermeasure or two against him and his quirk, which would be the worst situation possible for him. Damn, I shouldn't have displayed so much during the USJ incident. 
He knows that he should have done some things differently, but there is no medicine for regret, so he has to live with his decisions. But maybe if I didn't display such power, the heroes who knew of my power would find it weird. So maybe it wasn't a bad mistake after all. In the end, he comes to a realization. He shouldn't have revealed his power from the beginning. Ever since he entered UA, and on the day of the exam he shouldn't have displayed so much. Then he could have acted as he would have wanted and had a little more wiggle room. He could also go plus ultra, when he would need it and fake his true power as a moment in which he went past his limit. But as he thinks of this, he concludes. There is no use crying over spilled milk. But from now on, he will make damn sure to hide more of what he can do. That way, he could have his own plus ultra moment when it suits him. Kaminari smirks at this. Having come to his realization, another day passes by quietly in the forest training, which makes Kaminari even nervous with each passing day. And during one of the nights after training, while every other student in 1A and 1B is conversing with each other. Even Kaminari is talking with the others and portraying himself as if he is having fun. But on the inside, he is fully on guard and even expects a certain blood-drinking girl being amongst them already. He has made sure that a student from 1A is not the one she has impersonated. So if she has, it would be one of the 1B. He is quite sure of that boom. Suddenly out of nowhere an explosion rings out. Kaminari immediately enters lightning mode and his speed explodes. He pushes everyone out of the dining table and jumps off himself. The explosion wasn't strong enough to kill them all, but enough to kill most and cripple the others. Aizawa has a grave look on his face as he sees this, blaming himself as he couldn't react, and has a yellow flash push him out of the way. Kaminari! exclaims Mina. Aizawa looks over and his eyes as he sees a wincing Kaminari holding to his side as he is bleeding. At that exact moment, a purple gas fills the field, covering everyone. Bakugo, Shoto, use your quirks to create an explosion that generates strong enough air to push back this mist. Yells Kaminari immediately. He is already prepared to use his classmates' quirks to the maximum. This will help him. Also, currently, he has burst a blood bad under his shirt to make him seem injured. This way, his enemies underestimate him and think he is weakened. Act like prey. Be a predator. That thought rings inside Kaminari's head as he winces to fully play the act. His classmates also seem to be worried about him. Everyone, don't worry about me. It's only a small wound. Concentrate on the enemies, yells Kaminari. Cough before he coughs out blood in his hand, breaking another small blood packet inside his mouth. Anyone who knows the basics of medicine would know that coughing out blood most likely means that he has an internal injury. Whoa, seems like our target is already injured. What a weakling, bahaha, says a voice coming from the trees, his muscles acting like an exoskeleton below his neck. He is muscular, and he looks at every student below him while licking his lips. Boom! The purple mist is blown away by Bakugo and Shoto. Bakugo has an angry look in his eyes. He can't stand it. He was just saved by someone else. Just like the time with the sludge villain, except this time it is worse. He was saved by someone who he considers his rival. He looks at Muscular with a murderous look in his eyes. Bakugo then starts speaking strangely calmly. What? You think you can take Sparky right under our noses? Keep dreaming, you bastard. D.E. Boom. A huge explosion goes towards Muscular. A pillar of ice also accompanied it. The man smiles and is about to jump away. But his eyes widen as his quirk doesn't function. While his muscles retract inside his body going floppy. Aizawa looks at the man with an angry look in his eyes. Muscular smirks at that. Whoa. Well, ain't you a scary group of people? I wonder what your bashed in heads will look like. Fwash. But before Muscular is hit in a green flash, a green Nomu appears and punches the explosion and ice away. Boom. But as this happens, Nomu's vision is obscured for a split second. Kaminari immediately takes that chance, and with a sword sneakily created by Momo, he appears to Nomu's side. Fwish. He swings for Nomu's head, but the creature is fast and it can dodge, though an arm still goes flying. Kaminari, stay back, yells Aizawa. He can see that a copious amount of blood is flowing from Kaminari's side, and he looks more like a zombie with blood all around him. Don't worry, yells Kaminari, his eyes pointedly looking at Muscular. I will save everyone. He runs at top speeds at Muscular. But he is stopped as the green Nomu touches his electromagnetic barrier and Kaminari's body immediately does an auto-dodging sequence programmed into the technique. This saves Kaminari from getting a real injury. 
A muscular smile twitches at this as he sees Kaminari dodge Nomu's hit. Damn, that kid's instinct's crazy. How did he dodge that midair attack? Especially with that critical injury on him. He didn't know about Kaminari's auto-dodge system, so he just assumed that it was him dodging the attack by himself. Suddenly, a dark portal opens one centimeter away from Kaminari's back. He can sense this and his eyes widen. Suddenly, a hand comes from it. Kaminari twists his arm to use it as a defense, thinking that it might be Shigaraki with his power, but a gloved hand touches him. The students and teachers look at this, terrified as Kaminari is turned into a small marble. Mr. Compress comes out of the dark portal as it enlarges. Well, well, well. Seems like we got our main target. Fwash! In a big shockwave, Izuku breaks his legs, charging immediately towards Compress. In his mind, an image of a bloody Kaminari gonna save everyone even with heavy injuries. He can't accept something like that. He goes to punch Compress, but Muscular appears in front of him. Boom! Well, that punch has quite some power behind it. Kid, but nowhere near enough. Yells out Muscular, using his muscles and buffing them up to handle one for all at 100%. The Nomu moves at top speed, appearing at Izuku's side and about to punch him. Boom! But Kirishima takes the hit and is thrown back, but he immediately gets up once more. Oi! In no way you will take Kaminari from here. He has an angry look on his face. I wanted to show this move to Kaminari, but his mind wanders to the countless times that Kaminari beat him during their spars. His mind goes to a specific move, Lightning Lariat, a move in which Kaminari concentrates electricity in his arm and rushes his enemy at top speeds. Kirishima takes a breath and his body settles down, canceling his quirk, but his feet suddenly become like claws and he grips into the ground, at the same time his arm becomes spiky. Fwash! Using all his power he kicks off the ground and charges at Muscular, since Midoriya's hits do not affect. Bomb! Blood comes out of Muscular as Kirishima's spikes pierce through his muscles and heavily injure his body. But Kirishima doesn't pay any attention to that as he charges to Compress. But at this time, a dark portal opens, and Compress puts his hand through it, making a portal open next to Kirishima and touching him. Hmm. Compress is confused at first, but then he looks at Aizawa. You are a pretty cool guy. That is when suddenly Kendo appears behind Aizawa. Fwish. And she stabs a knife on his back. Immediately Todoroki uses his ice quirk, but Kendo jumps up and a liquid comes out of her body as her figure melts away. Whoa, that was so close, exclaims Toga as she appears with a smile on her face. I want to see the cool Kaminari senpai once more. You can't keep us away, she licks her lips as she says that. Momo looks at all of this calmly, remembering what Kaminari told her when he asked her for a sword. Well, we better get out of here says Compress and a portal appears below all the League of Villains, teleporting all of them away. Kaminari, Bakugo, and the rest have a shocked look on their faces. Inevitably, for a split second, everyone drops their guard. And in that second another small portal opens below Bakugo. He immediately jumps up but a blue aura appears around him which makes him be forcefully pulled towards the small portal. In which Compress hand comes out and touches Bakugo. Everyone charges at Bakugo to stop him from being captured, but it was too late already. An injured Aizawa couldn't turn around quick enough and Bakugo was also captured, resulting in an absolute loss for the heroes. Two hours later, in an undisclosed location, the League of Villains looked at two prisoners in front of them, tied up to their chairs. All for One was also looking at them through the screen. Hey, do you want to join the League of Villains? Asks All for One, Bakugo stays silent. Sure, I don't see why not, says Kaminari with a smile on his face. Goku looks at him shocked. Oi Sparky, what the hell do you think you are doing? Kaminari only smiles maliciously. At the same time, in UA High, a meeting between all the teachers was being held. The media is slandering our reputation, says Nizu, still with a casual look on his face. Aizawa frowns at this. Knock, knock, knock. That is when they hear a knock on the door, and in comes Momo with a nervous look on her face and a strange phone-like device in her hand. Sorry for intruding. But I have come to say what Kaminari told me before he charged at Nomu. All of the teachers look at her. None of them say anything except Nizu who smiles. You can tell us, Mississippi Momo. She nods and puts the device in her hand on the desk. Aizawa immediately recognizes what it is. A tracker. Then his face morphs into a smile, understanding what is going on now. That stupid brat. Yeah, I will join you guys. 
Kaminari accepts while looking at all for one on the TV screen, completely ignoring Bakugo who looks at him with shock and dissatisfaction. Still, Kaminari continues talking with the man on the TV. So are you the leader of the Villain League? Kaminari is wrapped in a rubber suit. This is a countermeasure of the League of Villains so he can't discharge electricity. He is also strapped to a chair. While Bakugo also has his hands strapped to a metal-looking box so in case he uses his explosion cork his hands will just blow up. You aren't being sincere, says All for One, a smile still on his face. Bakugo frowns at this and then he understands what is going on. Kaminari is just playing them. He smirks at that and looks at the villains and says, Oi, I will join you guys too. You are also being insincere, says All for One. Kaminari with a smile on his face shakes his head. Well, obviously we are insincere. We were heroes in training a couple of hours ago. But treating us like animals definitely won't help your case. I mean, if you are a charismatic leader, you will be able to convince us. Ha 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 ha. All for one laughs at that. Even though the TV a dangerous aura that envelopes everyone in the room. But Kaminari still keeps a smile on his face. He then nudges his head slightly. So? Will you at least release us? Sure. Says all for one, playing along with Kaminari. But the other one will be kept locked and you will keep your rubber suit on. Kaminari shrugs at that. Sure. I don't see why not. Toga. Take off his restraints. Sure. Says Toga happily. All for one is cautious as he sees Kaminari out of his restraints. His stolen premonition quirk nudges that the members of the Villain League will all die if he isn't here. That is why he decided to be on video call for this. Danki Kaminari, extremely dangerous. Tamura would be killed and so would the rest if he is left alone. Even with muscular Moonfish and Dobby in there it feels dangerous to leave that kid alone. As Kaminari is released he gets and sees that he is wearing one body tight rubber suit and a loose one above it. He just rubs his wrists. He doesn't do anything at this time. Too dangerous to do anything at this time. Contemplates Kaminari as he tries to pull out how his brother would act in a situation like this. Keep a gentle smile on your face. Always. But be careful to not make it too creepy. So, now that we are teammates, how about we talk about each other? Suggests Kaminari. Me, me. Calls out Toga. My name is Himiko Toga. Then she blushes and looks at Kaminari with a glance. When I saw you at the sports festival, I just couldn't resist. Can I have some of your blood? Kaminari smiles at that. Well, I am currently lacking blood. So how about when I heal? Promise. Yep, it's a promise, says Kaminari, a smile on his face. He then looks at the middle school looking kid with a gas mask. From what he remembers in the anime, he is the guy who creates the purple poisonous gas. Muscular, moonfish with his strange teeth quirk, and this guy have all survived and not gone to jail. I will need to fix that little deviation. Contemplates Kaminari, he can't let them be villains from today onwards. How about you Kaminari, Kuin? Asks Shigaraki scratching his neck. He doesn't feel good at all as he sees Kaminari acting so casual. He still remembers the time during the USJ attack. Why don't talk about yourself? Sure. Well my name is Denki Kaminari. 15 years old. I like a lot of things, my hobbies, mm, I don't have any of them and I don't hate many things. As for my dreams for the future, I know, never thought about them, answers Kaminari with an honest smile on his face. Grr, Shigaraki is angry at this. You mocking me? What is up with those answers? Kaminari nervously just shakes his hands. No, no, I think you just misunderstood. There are just some things that I am not comfortable revealing. After all, if I asked you about your childhood or something like that, would you reveal it for me? Shigaraki only grunts and looks away. A man-child. Analyses Kaminari already building plans. His quirk isn't the only thing dangerous. He knows many things about him that could be even more dangerous in a situation like this. Come on now, we are all comrades. How about we at least know each other's names and what I can call you guys? Says Kaminari, that friendly smile still on his face. I am muscular says muscular he is a very buff guy. M. Moonfish, mumbles the man wrapped in leather with only his mouth exposed. Mustard, answers the kid. I am twice, Himiko Toga, but you can call me Toga-chan. Not gonna reveal anything to you, says Dobby with an annoyed look on his face. He also feels something strange about Kaminari. Spinner, says the Ninja Turtle looking guy. You can call me Mr. Compress, says the man wearing a mark. Kuroguri answers the mass of darkness. 
Kaminari nods at them, he then looks at Shigaraki. What about you? Shigaraki, he answers and clenches his hand into a fist. Agoko looks at this with a calm look in his eyes. But inwardly he is shocked. Kaminari just made the villains give out their names. Some of them even gave their real names. He sure is slick as hell. Already the villains treat him as a reluctant friend. He might make something of this situation if he keeps this up. But the man on the TV, he seems to also see what Kaminari is up to. Though at the same time he doesn't seem willing to stop him. All for one has another plan for this. He plans to use Kaminari's plan against him. He wants Kaminari to get to know the League of Villain members and then when he sees that villains are also people and not some demonized people that the media portrays them as. But Kaminari on the other hand couldn't care less about this. He isn't some kid, he knows that the League of Villains are human too. Stupid from his view but still human. And he will kill them as humans also. What he truly is getting from these talks is an excuse. That is all, just an excuse to say how he discovered the League of Villains powers. So anyway, do you have anything around here to eat? Asks Kaminari. I can make myself some food. Kurojiri just points at the bar, which has some ingredients to make sandwiches. At the same time in Yue Hai, after Momo shows the tracking device, she creates another and points at one. This is for Kaminari's location, and the other is for the Green Nomu's location. Kaminari told me that he will show the League of Villains location once and for all. He had put the tracker in his wound. She winces slightly as she remembers that. He had to put it quite deep in that split second so others wouldn't notice it. Nizu looks at this with a serious look on his face. I see. Then we can't let Kaminari's efforts go to waste. The heroes don't know what to say. They have a 15-year-old like Kaminari willing to take such drastic actions. Some of the pro heroes in here wonder if they would be able to do that to themselves and handle the pain. Though they feel bad for having Kaminari resort to such methods. This will undoubtedly give them all a huge advantage against the villains and it will give them the way to destroy all the Nomis at least. They all know just how dangerous those creatures can be. After getting out of the meeting room, Momo had already told everything that she knows to the teachers. But she still feels like she hasn't done enough. As soon as she is outside, she sees Mina, Kirishima, and Todoroki waiting. Kirishima looks at her and says, Momo, all of us plus Midoriya have agreed to go and rescue Kaminari and Bakugo. Are you in? Momo looks nervous for a split second. Then a figure of a bloody Kaminari appears in her mind and strangely she calms down. After that, she has a resolute look in her eyes and says, Yes. While during this, Kaminari had made some sandwiches and eating them. Hmm, we should try getting a grill in here. I will cook some meat for you guys. He then goes towards Bakugo with a sandwich and tells the others. I will give this one to him, we haven't eaten dinner at all. Also, a full stomach makes us all feel better for each other, ha ha ha. As he says that he hand feeds Bakugo, who looks at Kaminari and sees a certain something in them. He takes a bite without saying anything. I knew it. There is no way this slick bastard wasn't up to something. Concludes Bakugo as he can feel that the sandwich is dosed in alcohol from the bar. This will make his heart beat faster and his sweat glands will open wider. But this was also a message from Kaminari to Bakugo. This meant that Bakugo should be ready at any moment now. They will soon make their escape. Kaminari smiles at this as he sees that Bakugo got his message. Under everyone's gaze, they had already communicated and understood this now. For an angry bullhead guy, Bakugo is quite smart. Also now is the time I do my fake plus ultra. My quirk doesn't allow me to control the electricity outside of my body. Then why doesn't my electricity hit the ground if that is so? As soon as it's out of my body it would hit the ground. But that isn't the case at all. Meaning that my inability to control the electricity outside of my body is only because I haven't looked at it from another perspective and used a new sense. The electricity comes out of me. It is a part of me. Kaminari looks at the other league members and with his hand behind his back, he does a countdown from three. Bakugo notices that all of the straps to his chair were burned open. Even his metal cuffs are deformed on the inside making them loose. Bakugo wonders just how the hell Kaminari did all this. But he doesn't waste time now at that. Now! Yells Kaminari, disorientating the rest of the League of Villains members. Immediately from the ground, a giant spike made out of some type of dark sand comes and it skewers through muscular, killing him instantly. A smile appears on Kaminari's face and unlike his usual friendly one. This terrifies all of the villain league members. Everyone is shocked due to the dark spike made out of iron sand that pierced muscular. 
Kaminari doesn't waste any more time and again manipulates the iron sand to surround him and Bakugo. But this is all a diversion as a small amount of iron sand goes towards Moonfish and it splatters along his jaw. Crunch destroying it and making the villain unable to use its metal tooth quirk. The middle school looking kid, Mustard, the guy who can create the purple poisonous must is also shocked as his foot is pierced by iron sand. Ah! He screams in pain and falls to the ground. That is when the other members of the league are distracted once again for a split second and during that time. An opening appears on the black sand tornado that Kaminari had surrounded himself and Bakugo. Out of the opening comes Bakugo who goes after Tamura and blasts him in the face. Knocking out the young man. Die you bastard! Yells Bakugo. We are heroes. No way we will join you trash villain group. He. Kaminari's smile comes from the dark sand as it stops rotating and settles down around him. Bakugo is right, we are gonna be the best goddamn heroes. No way we will settle as villains. Bakugo is the guy with the second most willpower in wishing to become a hero. The first being me, of course. Bakugo still has a smile on his face as he hears Kaminari say that. Watch my shadow, you electric bastard. Try to keep up, explosion boy, says Kaminari as they both start attacking the villain league. Kirojiri tries to create some portals but Kaminari's iron sand turns into spikes and charges at its weak point. So he has to create portals to intercept those. While everyone else is not looking, Toga takes that chance to use her technique and appears behind Kaminari without him or Bakugo noticing. But as she goes to stab Kaminari on the back her knife stops as it's about to touch his skin. Fwish! And it flies out of her hand as it is repulsed backward into her stomach. I did a plus ultra here, says Kaminari. This pressure helped him think of his quirk in ways that he had never even imagined before. Though he did entertain the thought and did try for a certain time, he didn't have that conviction that is born due to the pressure of real danger and death. Now that he knows that he can control the electricity outside of his body, he has already thought of endless possibilities. But at this moment, this new ability of his is untrained and even though he is acting casual, he has already wasted more than 20% of his reserves, he can't control it good enough and has wasted a lot of energy controlling the iron sand. Bakugo can also see that as Kaminari seems to be breathing heavier than normal. Bakugo's instincts are crazy like that, this complements his fighting style too. Fwum! Dobby shoots some blue fire at Kaminari, who just creates an iron sand wall, which immediately starts melting. Bakugo sees this and determines that Dobby is a bad enemy for Kaminari to fight, so he charges at him. Spinner tries to interrupt him, but Bakugo is not worried at all. His trust in Kaminari is high, and he wasn't disappointed as a black iron sand tentacle grabs the ninja turtle looking man and slams him on the ground. Bomb! Compress appears behind Kaminari and the latter couldn't keep his normal auto dodge barrier around him as his concentration is all into controlling the iron sand. But he had iron sand all around him and Compress did something that normally wouldn't be any big deal. He stepped on the iron sand, sending a signal to Kaminari who senses it and immediately creates an iron sand wall behind him, which is compressed. Still, it was too late as Kaminari had jumped away. He spreads the iron sand all over the room and even gets one of Dobby's hands. Crunch crushing it and Bakugo uses the split second to use a huge explosion. Boom! Dobby is covered in an explosion, Kaminari, and Bakugo working in perfect unison. Just when the League of Villains thought that it couldn't get any worse. Smash! Boom! Comes All Might's voice and Kamui Woods uses his vines to restrain everyone in the room. Ha! Huh. All Might is confused by it until he looks at Bakugo and Kaminari who have confident looks on their faces. You can capture the villains now. We already took care of them, says Kaminari casually. Bakugo also shrugs at that. Yeah, they were all kinds of weak. Ha 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 ha. All Might laughs heroically when he hears that. I guess I should call an ambulance. He then points to the villains. For them. Yep, says Kaminari nodding along. Bakugo only smirks at that. Also young Kaminari, says All Might in his usual loud voice. We will talk later about why you shouldn't do something like this. Kaminari nods at that, while Bakugo is confused. What is he talking about? Kaminari doesn't answer. Instead, he just leans forward and forces himself to throw up. Blue on the ground falls his lunch all mushed up and a small circular device that kept beeping a red light. Kaminari has a victorious smile on his face. I put a tracker on me and the Nomu, so we would be able to find the villain hideout and where all the Nomu are. Bakugo looks at Kaminari shocked. He has one-upped him again. But he wasn't angry this time as he would usually be. But at this exact time, Kaminari's, 
and Bakugu's eyes widen as a gray liquid surrounds them both. Kaminari feels as if he is in a strange liquid before he is repelled into another location. He immediately recognizes the place as the place where all might and all for one fought in the anime. Destroyed buildings all around and a giant crater in the ground. As Bakugo and the rest of the villains league are here, but as all for one sees them mostly knocked out, his fingers extend into red metal rods with red veins and stab into Kurogiri. Forceful quirk activation. Immediately, a dark warp gate opens up, having every one of the villains go through it. D damn, says Bakugo as he sees the other heroes on the ground and even best genist with a hole to his side. That must be the strongest villain in the world. Bakugo could instinctively tell that the man is strong. Extremely strong. Kaminari on the other hand just clenches his hand and looks at all for one. As a dangerous suppressing aura comes out of the villain. But what most of the people there didn't know is Izuku, Momo, Mina, Ida, and Kirishima, they were hiding behind one of the walls. They almost feel like throwing up just by feeling the presence of this man. Kaminari on the other hand doesn't seem frightened on the outside, because something else was happening inside of him. Inside of his mind, Kaminari was in a blank white space staring at a figure made out of the darkness in front of him, sitting on the ground. The only thing that seems distinctive about the figure is the giant grin on its face. It seems as if it's splitting his face apart. It has no eyes, nose, hair, or anything else. It has a humanoid form and ears. Amazing, isn't it? Asks the figure. Its voice seems as if thousands of deep voices talking at the same time. Kaminari doesn't say anything. Instead goes forward and grabs the creature by the throat and picks it up. Ugh. The thing seems to struggle. But its giant smile is once more very apparent on his face. That is a nice look you have on your face. Kaminari doesn't say anything. His eyes deathly calm and bloodshot as he looks straight at the creature in front of him. Would you get out of my body? Though it seemed like a question, he was ordering it. He, the dark creature, laughs. Who is to say that it is just your body? After all, aren't we the same? Hmm. Kaminari is confused at this until the creature points at its head. We are one. Always have been, says the creature. After all, don't you remember? How your brother died. Immediately, Kaminari frowns as his eyes widen. His brother died due to a car crash. But why? Why does he suddenly have another memory of him? A memory of them growing old together and living, being at each other's weddings, funerals, and so much more. We grow old and die happy with our family by our side. Don't you want to know the truth? Let's become one like we always were, says the creature as it extends his hands towards Kaminari. You will gain unimaginable power then. You will know everything. The creature's hands are about to touch Kaminari's head. Whish! But before it can do so, both of the creature's hands fall on the ground. Ha! Huh. Kaminari has a cold look on his face. I told you to bugger off. I know who I am. I am myself. I can think, therefore I am. He then grabs the creature's head and cracks it like an egg, having it turn to dust. The rest of the dark creature also turns to dust. Who cares? contemplates Kaminari. Dumbass, I will do what I want. I am myself, not my brother, not anyone else. So I will do whatever I want, says Kaminari suddenly on the outside. Boom! In a blink of an eye, all for one's hand is blown off. Kaminari has a cold look in his eyes as he looks straight at the man. Oi villain, run away now, for I am here. In a flash, as he says that he jumps up, as he is Midair, this is his weakness since he can't have his top speed. All for one smirks at this as his arm is recreated into a new one. But he winces at this slightly, his body is too worn out already. He didn't think that he would take this much damage. He shoots some wind balls at Kaminari, who only twitches his finger slightly immediately behind his back a pair of wings made out of electricity appear. The slash N. Explanation on how Kaminari flies. He can fly if he is surrounded by a large amount of atomized water vapor. He just manipulated the water vapor in the air forming it into wings using the static electricity from interactions between particles. Kaminari looks around and sees the cameras around him. He nods to himself internally. This is what he wanted. He wants to show the world what he is made of and how he will be the number one hero. Black sand appears around him and he has a serious look on his face. He must finish this fight as soon as he can. His electricity reserves will not hold up at all. He only had 150 volts, already expended over 50 million. The black sand turns into tendrils and it charges towards all for one. The man smiles and points his hand at Kaminari. Well, isn't that something? 
Pow! The iron sand is dispersed in with an air cannon, but Kaminari had already dodged the attack way before it was even shot. He still remembers some of the quirks all for one used against All Might in the anime. Kaminari also observes something else. He can see that All for One has a regeneration quirk. It is dangerous, but he knows how to take care of that. Just burn the wound, it won't regenerate after that. 60% left. Calculates Kaminari, his reserves taking a huge dip in power. Still, All for One smiles at that, causing Kaminari to think that he must have a quirk that can see how much power he has. Still, though, that doesn't matter. I just need to hold him back enough. Kaminari then starts experimenting by heating the iron sand around him. Trying to determine how all for one sees things, is it heat seeking or echolocation, or both? Maybe a whole different quirk altogether. One thing is for sure though, he doesn't plan to rush all for one, it doesn't matter whether the man is weakened or not. He knows that he wouldn't be able to beat all for one when he could blow half a city in one shot. But now, it is more up to discussion. Kaminari takes out a specially made coin, one that wouldn't melt due to the heat created by the air resistance. Akugo yells out Kaminari. Take the other heroes to safety and some of the civilians around. I am trusting you on this. That is all Kaminari needs to say. He knows no matter how Bakugo he still wants to be a hero. He doesn't do this just for fun, and the recent predicament of theirs has allowed them to understand each other better. Bakugo doesn't wait for a second more and starts using explosions to repel himself to the buildings to save people. Izuku POV as I looked at Kachan. That was the first time I saw the difference between me and him. While I was scared and couldn't move, he had gone to save the people. While Kaminari is fighting all for one because even while it seems like no attack seems to be going through. Boom. 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 Suddenly three simultaneous attacks are fired by Kaminari. Ones that I couldn't even see except that they looked like a shining light hitting all for one. Destroying half his chest and his lower body. Ahahaha. <laughs> but all for one still laughs. I made this quirk combination to fight against All Might. But I guess it doesn't seem to work for you. Who could have thought that I would meet someone like you here? Brat, do you want my quirk? All for one? Join me and I will give it to you if you join me. As he says that my heart drops. I know Kaminari will say no. But for that split second, doubts started to appear in my heart. Damn it. Why? I can't help it as tears come out of my eyes. Why can't I move while someone like Kaminari can fight against someone who even All Might has problems against and even almost killed him? No way. I am hero can't start getting associated with villains, answered Kaminari, his voice resolute. I don't understand. Someone like Kaminari would truly be way better than me as the one for all user. What did all might see in me, when people like Kaminari exist? General POV while Izuku was thinking that, Kaminari winces slightly because his reserves drop down to 40%. Eventually, he will lose, all for one is regenerating and creating multiple arms and using his air cannon quirk even more. If it wasn't for Kaminari using his electricity to wire his brain to work at faster speeds than normal, he is sure that he would have slipped somewhere. Also, he isn't getting closer to take any risks, he can already see that there is a high chance of death or at best critical injury if he does that. All for one has a huge grin on his face and suddenly his arm enlarges and is about to attack Kaminari again when... Smash! Boom! All Might's voice rings out as a punch lands on All for One's head, plummeting him to the ground. You have done well, Young Denki, I got it from here, yells out All Might. Unlike his usual smile, an angry look was on his face as he looked at All for One. Kaminari on the other hand still has a heroic smile on his face as he says, All Might Sensei, I will use my quirk to save the people around here. So show that villain what it means to be a hero. BZZZT as Kaminari says that, he dispels his control over the iron sand and he also cancels his flight, starting to fall. His hair stands up as he is surrounded by electricity. He immediately starts running to save people. As he does so a huge smile is apparent on his face. I can see it now. I can see my future road so clearly. Tonight I couldn't beat all for one. But soon. So soon. I can feel it. I will be able to defeat him. With that Kaminari charges straight on. Feeling that his quirk once again has that limitless potential that it had in the beginning. All for one looks at all might and chuckles. He, that kid, his quirk is nice. All Might frowns at that, but then he remembers Kaminari's file. That quirk would be useless to you anyway. He doesn't elaborate anymore as he charges at All for One, exchanging punches with the man. Boom! But All for One is easily crushed as his arm breaks like a twig and he crashes into a building. The fight with the brat weakened me, contemplates All for One. 
His fight with Kaminari left him weakened exponentially, after all, with his old body regeneration isn't as easy as it once was. Also, the heat from the railgun's friction did make it harder to regenerate. Boom! And as All for One is on the ground and All Might is approaching, Kaminari takes this chance to hit him again. There aren't a lot of people around, as Bakugo had already saved most of them, Kaminari is taking care of the ones who normally wouldn't be sensed and are unconscious. Iron Sand tries to wrap around All for One, and the villain has to use Air Cannon to escape the encirclement. All Might Sensei, use your strongest attack, trust me, yells out Kaminari and All Might takes this chance to attack. All for one smiles and is about to raise his hand to repel All Might, but suddenly his body slows down. Kaminari smiles at this, he is manipulating the iron sand inside All for One's body, he has been dispersing it with the air and he took that chance. United States Smash, yells out All Might, completely smashing in All for One's face and knocking him as he crashes to the ground. All Might is still in his muscular form as he raises his fist upward with a heroic smile on his face. He still has enough energy left, plenty of it. All due to Kaminari's intervention. Kaminari smiles at this. It all went according to plan. For him, it is too soon for All Might to retire. He needs the man to take care of the many troubles that will appear in the future. He doesn't exactly trust Midoriya to be enough of a backup. The camera from the TV helicopter flickers from All Might to Kaminari as he is giving his teacher a thumbs up. All Might then smiles and points at the camera and says, It's your turn next. That causes much speculation amongst the people about what he meant. Was it told to a villain? But they all had one major possibility in mind. Kaminari was coincidentally in the direction he pointed at. This caused a storm to rise in the news and social media. Many news articles had headlines like this. It's your turn next? What did it mean? The mystery UA student the next All Might. The next symbol of peace is Denki Kaminari the next All Might? The flash becomes the next symbol of peace. Many news articles like that appeared, and many news sources were asking if All Might had any comment on this. His non-action was taken as confirmation and immediately people were hungry for more information on Denki Kaminari. The future symbol of peace. Kaminari while eating breakfast the next day looked at the news articles and a smirk is apparent on his face. After the battle, Kaminari started going to school as usual, and also he was sent a flyer to ask if he would join the dorm rooms in the school. He signed to that easily, since there are also no parents that he would need to have signed for him, he didn't face problems like some other people. All Might was in his thin form as he looked at Kaminari's house. Also, another average-looking detective with black hair and eyes was next to him. Neither of them knew that Kaminari had already accepted and signed the letter. So they were here to talk with him. As they knocked on the front door no one answered but they went to the backyard as they heard sounds coming from it and they were surprised by what they saw. Kaminari was there. His body releasing a stream of electricity as iron sand moves around him like a giant wave. Then in the end it surrounds him like a protective cloak. Neither All Might nor the detective could believe that this was the result of an electricity production quirk. It seemed more like a whole different quirk, and it has only been a couple of days since the incident, yet Kaminari seems to have gotten control of his iron sand manipulation ability. He lessened the consumption of his electricity by a large margin. He only used as much as was needed. Suddenly Kaminari stops and looks at All Might in his deflated form. Hey there, says All Might awkwardly feeling like he saw something he shouldn't. Denki Kaminari, we are here to dash. Okay, answers Kaminari, interrupting All Might. I accept joining your boarding school program. Uh. Okay. All Might is clearly surprised by this. After that whole thing, Kaminari packs his bags and some boxes that will be transferred later by some personnel. But he was transferred by All Might and the detective in a car. All Might look at Kaminari reading something from his phone, and he decides to ask. So, your quirk. How is it able to do so many things? HM? I just do it, says Kaminari, not elaborating at all. He is currently reading a book on how to make programs for himself. He needs a personal supercomputer to do some calculations that the human mind can't do instantly. If he can incorporate this super calculating ability into his fighting style, he will feel pretty safe fighting against almost any villain. After all, him being able to control the electricity outside of his body is truly something that opened countless possibilities for him. Flight, observation, spying, defense, attack, speed, and everything else in between. Almost everything can be achieved with my quirk. Just the ideas I have right now could push me to the level of a nuclear threat if I decided to study on them more. Contemplates Kaminari, 
and he knows that no one would be able to copy his feats either. Well, unless they were trained from birth at max capacity, learned physics, and had the same quirk as him while having the same thoughts as him. Which is pretty much impossible to happen in this world. He wouldn't worry about someone copying him. Just the crazy amount of research and development that he did with his quirk is crazy. Plus, even if they did, he knows his own weaknesses best. This is his understanding of his power evolving. Someone like him would never be satisfied with being number two, even if Izuku is given the key to be number one. Kaminari will kick the door open and take the number one title. Then, when that happens, he can start enjoying life. After all, at the end of the day, his happiness is priority number one now. He has been given a second chance at life, he doesn't want to waste it. His strength isn't something inherited like Midoriya, so he will have to give it his all to become someone with a normal quirk who can fight those two monsters when they fully master both their powers. When he arrives at the dorm room building, the car drive is silent and is filled with All Might being uncomfortable in front of Kaminari while at the same time try and not spill anything that might give away his real identity. Smart kids are scary. Just the way he looked at me, I could read his suspicions, after Kaminari finally stops messing with All Might to alleviate his boredom. He smiles at the sight in front of him. It is quite big, and it will help him have access to big training facilities, bigger than his backyard. He felt lucky that he had a good relationship with his previous neighbors so they didn't report him to the authorities for irregular quirk usage, and although he would only get a slap on the wrist, he wouldn't like to have that on his record. He needs to build the perfect image of strength and prestige. Not only that, but he will have to inspire hope into others, something that Midoriya can't do at this time. Also, Kaminari doesn't know how long All Might can use his quirk for now, but he knows that he can still use it which is a better result than he expected. Now, problems like Overhaul and many others can easily be solvable by All Might if they get out of hand. All Might will solve them even if he has to give up his life to do so. This was Kaminari's plan all along. All Might is his fallback in case of failure. Whether that failure happens or not, it doesn't matter. He will still have this fallback plan of his. Also, it seems like he will be the first person here. The school must have determined him the most likely to get attacked by villains. After all, in the eyes of the people he is the next symbol of peace chosen by All Might. Of course, this was all orchestrated by Kaminari. He needed them to truly become the symbol of peace. But unlike All Might, he doesn't mind killing villains. They are just trash of society at best, and thorns in my side at worst. They must all be eliminated. Contemplates Kaminari, thinking of bringing back the villain execution law once more. That way, he can kill the villains that he captures. All for one is captured right now, and that brings him endless discomfort. He should have been executed. The only type of good enemy is a dead one. Thinks Kaminari, the heroes will always be at a disadvantage against the villains, because the heroes will never use lethal force while the villains always will. My vision recently has started getting worse. I can't see things that good when they are further away. Contemplates Kaminari, due to his excessive reading, he is now in need of glasses. Better get contacts. Kaminari is just walking along the school, there are a bunch of other students around him. But he suddenly stops and looks towards the crowd at a specific unassuming female student from the general studies. The student looks panicked as Kaminari smiles at her. And then she just gets to the back of the crowd. She was running away without causing a commotion. Toga POV, how? Why did he look at me when I was in disguise? Did he notice me? Internally contemplates Toga as she thinks of what just happened. No way, his quirk is electrification. But he was seen using his quirk in ways that are incomprehensible to the normal person. She then walks into an alley as she gets out of the school grounds. Still, she keeps her disguise on as she has a strange gut feeling. Hmm? You are quite interesting, says Kaminari as his cold hand grabs Toga from the back of her neck. I feel danger from you. What might that be? Toga's body locks in place. She feels a strange sense of fear settle over her body. But at the same time, a smile appears on her face. She couldn't understand why she felt happy as his grip tightened to a point that it became painful. Senpai, you are being too rough, moans Toga as a blush appears on her face. Since she is still under disguise, she is confident that Kaminari won't attack her without being 100% sure that she is a villain. But even that doesn't matter now, since she has already sent a signal to the rest of the villain league. Me being rough? Asks Kaminari. A malicious smirk appears on his face. I know that you went to a sketchy and secluded alley for a reason. Oh, senpai. You are making my heart tingle, says Toga sweetly. But her had a different meaning as Kaminari ran some electricity through her. I know. I have always made certain people feel. 
a certain way. EZZZT his electricity starts burning Toga's skin, which causes her to wince as her disguise starts falling off. Come on now, baby. You seemed like you could handle rough. If you make a face like that, you will make me feel guilty, says Kaminari as he raises his voltage. This causes Toga to start tearing up as it starts really hurting her. HH dash. She starts to scream but a quick chop to her throat damaged her vocal cords as blood drips down her lip. Now now. I want to know what the villain's league is up to. He says cheerfully as he pulls out a notebook. Damn. This guy is no hero. He is more like a villain. Thinks Toga as she feels Kaminari taking her hidden knife and cutting her Achilles tendon behind her legs. She immediately falls on her knees at this no longer having the ability to stand up or run. Now you should start talking, or I will kill your friends too when they come here. He knew. Wonders Toga, shocked at how much Kaminari seemed to know. But what she didn't assume was that Kaminari just guessed. And his guess was confirmed by the expression on her face. Tamura could sense a heavy feeling set over his stomach as he and the other villain league members went towards Toga's location. What is this feeling? He wonders not understanding the unnecessary panic that he is feeling. It was like performing in front of a crowd for the first time. But as soon as they arrive at the location, they are on top of the roofs when they see Toga covered in blood and laying on the ground. While Kaminari has a knife in his hand as he looks up at them with a smirk on his face. Twice panics and jumps down with an angry shout. You bastard! Ah, come on now, aren't you the guys who kill innocent people? Says Kaminari. No need to be so panicked at the sight of blood. He casually dodges one of Twice's punches and kicks the man in the stomach. Bomb! Twice crashes into a wall, causing cracks all around it. He spits out blood and flops down. Twice was knocked out instantly, comments Dobby. Though he was calm on the outside, internally he is contemplating how to get out of this alive. Kaminari killed Muscular, Moonfish, and Crippled Mustard, so he definitely isn't like other heroes. Boss! We should be careful, says Magna, though all the villain league are here. Every single one of them is on edge because of the sweetly smiling teen in front of them. Aren't you gonna attack? Asks Kaminari curiously. Oh well, if you aren't... Bzzzt instantly he appears behind Tamura. And with a quick chop to his neck, the villain's boss is knocked out. Spinner uses his giant hunk of metal swords to attack Kaminari. This was all done in panic as the sword burst. The chapels sinking into Spinner's body. Ack. Dobby protects the others by shooting his blue flame at the metal melting it. He looks at Kaminari and says, this guy is just trouble. Boom. And immediately after, a burst of blue flames are shot at the UA student. Behind Kaminari black wings appear, they are made out of iron sand, and he starts flying, dodging the attack and giving himself more maneuverability. But as the flame clears out, every one of the villain league members is gone. Hey, well, they are quite skilled, says Kaminari casually. He planned to let them go since the beginning. He had no plans to capture them, at least not yet. Also, he even bloodied up Toga to make them panic. In actuality, he just needs to sense her brain signals to judge if she is lying or not. He didn't need to torture her too much, or at all for that matter. Playing mind games is more efficient. He then dispels his wings and falls on the ground. After that, he walks away with his hands in his pocket. Back at UA Academy, everyone from Class 1A was together and checking each other's rooms while Kaminari was absent. So, what did you and Kaminari do against the villains after they captured you? Asks Kirishima, and everyone else was curious. Huh? What are you bastards on about? Obviously, we cracked some villain skulls, Akugo says aggressively. He then looks at Midoriya and points at him. Unlike you who gets threatened and does nothing. It is different when strong people are captured. Now, now, no need to turn this into an insult against Midoriya, says Siro, trying to defuse the situation. Hmm. Momo thinks about something. But Kaminari planned to get captured all along. She then looks at the others and sees them all looking at her in surprise. After all, that isn't exactly public knowledge. Eh, uh, I mean, nothing. Forget I said that. Akugo folds his arms and leans back on the couch. His mind thinking back on the night that he and Kaminari were captured. That bastard. What is he thinking? Akugo noticed something that night. Kaminari is planning something big but he can't see it. The strength that he displayed that night puts him as an obvious candidate for number one. He then looks at his hand and clenches it into a fist. I need to train harder if I don't want to be left behind. So he gets up. W, where are you going, Kachan? 
asks Midoriya which annoyed Bakugu due to the nickname. Still, he took a breath and calmed down. I am going to train. I am not a jagoff like you. Everyone was surprised by the calm demeanor Bakugu showed. Usually, he would be mad and rave around, but now he is very casual. This was all due to him seeing Kaminari act calmly even in front of the villains. So he too plans to learn that kind of demeanor, though he will still need to use his anger to his advantage. After all, it helps with his quirk as it makes him sweat more. As Bakugo walks outside, he sees Kaminari walking in. They just walk by each other without saying anything. But suddenly, as they pass each other, Bakugo stops and asks, Sparky, do you think that there is a way to strengthen my quirk? Kaminari doesn't stop walking and instead just smirks. You are already in the right way. I never said this, but honestly, I am glad that it was you that got kidnapped with me and not someone else. Bakugo smirks at that. Kaminari was being truthful at this. Even Todoroki would have been troublesome due to Dabi being there. Izuku would have been a big no, and Kirishima is too slow against Tamura and his defense quirk would be useless. So he meant it when he said that Bakugo was the perfect partner in that situation. But Bakugo took this in another way too. He saw it as Kaminari saying that he is stronger than the others. Kaminari didn't bother to clarify the meaning. So there was a misunderstanding born that lit Bakugo's spirit on fire. Now only Kaminari is standing in front of me from being the next number one hero. After walking off, Kaminari walks towards the common room and sees the others gathered in there. Yo, what are you guys doing? Asks Kaminari. Immediately, Toru turns towards him. Well, the only thing visible is her clothes turning around. Kaminari, everyone wants to see your room. Kaminari was confused about this for a split second. But then he remembers the thing that would have happened and how everyone should have seen each other's rooms by now. Well, my room isn't anything special, Kaminari says casually, looking to the side uncomfortably. This makes everyone curious, even Mina who has been in his room countless times. Internally Kaminari laughs, but on the outside, he acts even more nervous. Everyone's hopes were dashed a minute later. Eh, this is average, says Sato, the room seemed almost boring. It had a bed, desk, computer, and shelf. That was all there was to the room. You don't even have books in here? Asks Momo. She thought that someone smart like him would have books. I keep my books digitally. Carrying books around is inefficient when I can just have all the books I want on my phone. Answers Kaminari as he pulls out his phone and points at it. All my books are here. That is when he sees Mina looking under his bed. Let me see where you have your porn stash hidden. As she is crouched down he kicks her lightly in her behind. Kia. This causes her to yelp in surprise. He then pinches her cheeks in annoyance. I told you not to say something like that. While I don't mind, how will you find a boyfriend if you act like this? You touched me in a private place. Take responsibility, yells Mina, blushing in all shades of pink, while she points at him. Sai, I worry about you, Mina. How will you ever find a guy who will be okay with these things? Complains Kaminari. The rest of the class looks at Mina and him acting like this and can't help but think that Mina and Kaminari like a couple of siblings. At this Mina mumbles. I have already found a guy who will be okay with this. Huh? Did you say something? Kaminari asks, before going back to berating her to act more ladylike. The rest of the class starts feeling like third wheels in this situation. Also, they all had one thought in their minds. Even someone like Kaminari can be dense. He is so dense. Everyone could see what was going on here. Mineta was crying tears of blood as he looked at what seemed to him a harem anime scene. I hate this bastard. He internally screams. I am so jealous of him. Don't treat me like a kid, says Mina, annoyed as Kaminari pats her head. There, there you will be okay. Later on in the day, Kaminari is training by himself in the school gym. Night came about and he is still training, manipulating the iron sand around him with such impeccable control that would make most people think that he has had this ability for years. He then takes a can and holds it in his palm and starts manipulating the electricity around it creating a chain reaction that crushes the can but he is not satisfied with this and tries to make it into a metal sphere. He succeeds in doing so 20 minutes later, his forehead covered in sweat due to the crazy amount of concentration that took. It could easily crush the can, but he values control more than raw power in this scenario. After all, while his quirk was built to be a raw power type, with the control he has reached new possibilities. He then shoots the ball like a boom. It burns a hole through a hill, but 50 meters later, due to the friction, the ball burns off. Kaminari has already started having some special coins built for him. 
coins that don't burn off so easily due to friction. He doesn't mind having the power of science on his side. Even then, this is a clear weakness on Kaminari's part. Many heroes don't use technology to raise their abilities, afraid of becoming dependent on it. Some even look down on people like that. But Kaminari knows that his powers work on science and doesn't have such useless pride. The Nomis are created by science, and those things can beat most of the heroes in the world. Though, Kaminari still wants to figure out a way that he can use his to its full potential without relying on these coins. Even with all the power he has obtained, he sees himself as weak. He knows that Aizawa with a gun can kill him in less than 10 seconds. That is the terrifying reality that brings chills down his spine. I need to get stronger, much stronger. But how? I don't know how to remove friction. Even with my cork experiencing a kind of evolution now that I can control the electricity outside of my body. I'll still have limits. He doesn't like that at all. But that is the daunting reality of the situation. Every cork has a limit of course though some might seem limitless in power. Like all for one can only have as much power as all the corks in the world if he stole them all. That is the cork with the widest limit but for a cork like that the user is the only limit. If a cork like all for one was in my hands, wonders Kaminari, a smirk appearing on his face, but he shakes those thoughts out of his head. It wouldn't be as useful to him, even if he could somehow miraculously get it. After all, when someone steals a cork, he doesn't take just the good things, he takes the bad too. Like a strengthening cork that requires one to burn their fat. That would be an obvious advantage, but a disadvantage at the same time. Also because of that, all for one will never get too many quirks because they would destroy him due to their side effects. Ah, youthful men are truly something else. Comes a voice from the entry. Kaminari doesn't need to turn around to know who it is. Midnight Sensei. Sorry? I am gonna be finishing this training soon, says Kaminari, his head all in the game, he doesn't bother with her. Midnight sees this and walks closer to him. She is currently not wearing her hero uniform. Instead, she is in her civilian clothes and wearing glasses. You should enjoy school life more. I see that you have only been training these last months. A hero isn't someone who is only strong. Kaminari stops in the middle of his exercise and looks at Midnight, barely able to hide his contempt. I understand. I will keep that in mind. He then goes back to his training and pulls out another empty can, trying to make a miniature sword out of it just by using his electric control. Midnight frowns at this and comes behind him, and her hands massage his shoulders lightly and seductively. She huffs. Yep, just as expected, you are very tense. Kaminari sighs at the situation, knowing that he won't be able to get out of this easily. In the end, he just leans back and falls on the ground. Midnight's face covers his view of the training ground ceiling. This is so troublesome, Kaminari complains. If you came here to do something with me, then I would be happy. But I don't want to hear just another lecture. I know my body the best. I am not overworking it. Midnight smirks with a seductive look in her eyes. Era, who said I am not here to do something with you? It is so late that no one uses these training grounds. She leans forward and clasps Kaminari's cheek seductively. But unlike what she expected, this makes him chuckle, as if amused by the situation. Your hero reputation really doesn't suit you at all, Kaminari says with a knowing look in his yellow eyes as if he had seen right through her. This creeps her out a little. As the principal said, Kaminari has a genius level of intelligence. Still, she sits down next to him and looks at the ceiling with him. We heroes aren't working for nothing. We want you to feel no need to stress yourself too much. Kaminari doesn't say anything at that. He honestly would like to relax, but with his knowledge of the future, he can't do that. As soon as I am foolish enough to let my guard down, I will be surpassed and killed by the others. I then will become just one of the nameless losers in this world. My story being nothing special, Midnight takes his silence as progress, and he is contemplating something. But the next thing that he says shocks her. This dorm thing, it isn't just as a way to protect the student, is it? Kaminari asks, already knowing the answer to this. He might have forgotten a lot of what seems unimportant in the manga that he read in his previous life. But he can understand what is going on here. The second time, in the forest, only a small number of people knew where we were going. We have a spy amongst us, so you all also made this dormitory to observe the students. The school suspects that the spy might be one of the students. Midnight was frozen in shock. Kaminari had hit the nail in the head. Want to hear my suspicion on who is the spy? Asks Kaminari, he gets up and Midnight immediately is on guard. Suspicious of Kaminari immediately, 
She expected him to be intelligent for his age. But this goes beyond just a simple genius. She pulls up her sleeve, ready to release her knockout guess. Ha ha ha, just joking, sensei. He laughs as he sees Midnight on guard. Kaminari can destroy her in less than a second. So he didn't need to take her seriously at all, as even her quirk is useless against him. But really, though, I doubt that anyone in the facility or UA student is a spy. You must think higher. Higher! Midnight wonders what he means by that. But then she got another shock. He means the top heroes. She is about to ask him more. But he just makes a silencing motion by putting his finger in front of his lips. Don't go around revealing this to just anyone, Midnight Sensei. Because if that information gets to the wrong hands, then we are in some deep shit. After saying that, Kaminari covers his body in electricity, which has a yellow tinge to it. His hair stands up, and his eyes shine golden. BZZZZT, he then disappears in a yellow flash, leaving Midnight to ponder the things that he said to her. Kaminari POV as I go towards the dormitory. I can't help but contemplate if what I did was the right thing. Now the surveillance towards me will increase exponentially, but I must start building my credibility as a smart person who likes to keep things to himself. The villains must start getting eliminated now. No need to let scum live any longer. The most troublesome ones must go first. Sai, why can't my life be easier? If only I was reborn with some mind control quirk. Everything would be a hundred times easier. Still though, things will start getting serious now. People around me could start dying if I am not careful. And while I wouldn't sacrifice my life for another. I still don't like to have my friends and people I have started to care about get killed. Damn, though, meeting Midnight is kinda disappointing. From how she is portrayed she seems like a slutty woman, but after observing her some more, I know that she would never do anything unprofessional with a student like me. The next day, during homeroom, Aizawa talks to the class about their next challenge. Your next big thing is obtaining their provisional hero license. It has a roughly 50% passing rate. I am gonna pass this, then I will ask Kaminari out again. Gotta make sure that no one is around this time, whispers Mina to Toru. Aizawa doesn't say anything and instead just throws a chalk, hitting Mina in the forehead. Ow! She yelps and stops talking as she sees Aizawa's scary look in his eyes. Anyway, as I was saying, continues Aizawa as if nothing happened. That is why we will be spending time developing your ultimate moves. Then as if on cue, Cementos, Ectoplasm, and Midnight enter the classroom and elaborate more on the importance of ultimate moves. Kaminari drones out at this, he already has countless ultimate moves. Instead, he looks at Momo who is writing everything down. She has become very serious recently, as she wants to catch up to her electrifying friend. Anyway, out on your hero costumes and come to Jim Gamma, says Midnight, and like always, she leaves an innuendo about skin-tight hero costumes before she walks away. Class 1 a changes into their hero costumes. Midoriya looks at Kaminari as he is conversing with Kirishima, both of them already having their ultimate moves. Kaminari catches Izuku staring at him and looks at him weirdly before covering his body. Sorry, Midoriya, but I don't swing that way. As soon as Kaminari says that everyone now looks at an embarrassed Izuku, which was the worst move to make as now everyone looks at the user of one for all weirdly. Kaminari only snickers at this. Come on, I was just joking around. But your reaction made me question it for real now. Ha 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 ha. After some joking around, the class meets at Jim Gamma to begin their training. Izuku looks at Ochako and, like always, she is looking at Kaminari. Usually, he wouldn't think about things like this, but yesterday evening he heard the girls having some girl talk, and Kaminari was mentioned a lot. Like by every single girl in the class. This gym also goes by another name. Aizawa starts explaining. It is, Training Dining Land or TDL. This confuses everyone why he would say something like that. Even Kaminari is confused. He wonders if this is something important. But Cementos comes forward and starts explaining in more detail. Well, it is because of me. I can change the environment into anything I want by using my quirk. So this can create many environments to fight in. In this way, the gym caters for each student. Hence the dining in TDL. Kaminari listens to this with a bored expression on his face. He didn't care about any of this. Tenya abruptly asks why the class must have ultimate moves for the provisional hero license exam. Aizawa replies by stating that the exam tests many facets of being a hero, and Midnight points out the particular importance of fighting ability, of which ultimate moves are an integral part. Ectoplasm brings up Tenya's recipro burst as an example of an ultimate move, claiming that it poses enough threat to be classified as one, much to Tenya's delight. 
Midnight looks at Kaminari. Also your lightning speed also classifies as an ultimate move. Kaminari nods at that already knowing this. Also, his Iron Sand manipulation classifies as an ultimate move in a way. Aizawa then seemingly just remembers something and points it out to the students. Oh, by the way, you will all spend the remainder of the summer perfecting your ultimate moves. Also, you should all think about some costume upgrades. With that said, the class begins training by fighting against ectoplasm clones. Kaminari too, but this time he is not planning to use his quirk at all. Instead, he plans to learn some genuine hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The clone looks at Kaminari and sighs. Honestly, Kaminari, you are already good enough. I have no idea what to teach you, except for some close quarters combat without your quirk. That is the truth, and Ectoplasm easily admitted that. Kaminari is at the top not only in his class, year, or school. He will be on the top five at least if he is immediately made a hero. He will be the hardest to teach. Because I don't have much to teach him, thinks the Ectoplasm clone, but he is also proud of the future hero. At the same time, many different students are learning new things too. All with different difficulties. Mina tries shooting a jet of acid from her palms, but the jet does not travel more than a few feet. The ectoplasm clone suggests for her to make a nozzle with her fingers, increasing the velocity of her acid jet and allowing it to shoot farther. An ectoplasm clone challenges Momo to create two items at once, which she does easily. Izuku stares at the rest of his classmates and tells his ectoplasm clone that he isn't sure how an ultimate move would work, as his arms are vulnerable to damage if he pushes his quirk too far. The clone tells Izuku to simply work on developing his quirk for the day. That is when All Might appears at the entrance of the gym, he is in his thin form. Though he is still an active duty hero due to Kaminari's help during the All for One fight. He can feel that he won't be able to use One for All for much longer, the quirk is simply moving on to the new user and weakening by the day. He focuses immediately on Izuku, noticing he is having trouble coming up with an ultimate move. Bakugo, on the other hand, explosively defeats his clone and demands Ectoplasm make another. Achiko, who is practicing self-levitation, Rikido, who is powering up with cake, and Toru remark on Katsuki's impressive ability and power. All Might appears next to Izuku as he looks at the other students improving. Kaminari too was having a hand-to-hand -hand fight with an Ectoplasm clone. Due to the latter being a hero very experienced with close quarters combat, Kaminari was losing terribly because he isn't using his quirk at all. Honestly, that kid is something else. Always trying to improve no matter what. Contemplates All Might, truly impressed by Kaminari's attitude. He never is arrogant even after fighting one of the most dangerous villains, if not the most dangerous, in the world. He is still humble and doesn't mind getting beaten by ectoplasm, still refusing to use his quirk, and continues to fight. That is when All Might gets an idea and looks at Izuku. Midoriya, you are too hard to copy All Might, he stays in character as he says that, just so others don't figure out who he is. All Might smiles as Izuku seems to figure something out. Then the NR.1 hero moves on to give advice to Aijiro. After the first day of training, Kaminari heads to the development studio for a costume upgrade. He needs some new things to be added, metal can also be added since it doesn't isolate his power anymore, instead, it helps him levitate his body. Izuku, Tenya, and Achiko accompany him. So you guys need some upgrades too? Asks Kaminari, a gentle smile appeared on his face. This makes Ochako flushed. Yes, the first to answer is Tenya. I am looking for a radiator to keep my engines cool. Whoa, that would bring your quirk to a new level if you were able to get that. Exclaims Kaminari in amazement. I will have to be very careful of you now when we fight. You ultimate move could be spammed and one hit from that and I would either be out for the count or close to it. Tenya looks at Kaminari in shock when he says that. After all, Kaminari saying that he will have to be careful against him is the best compliment one can get. Especially a speed type like Tenya. Of course, whether Kaminari told the truth on that or not. Only he will know. Chaco smiles at this too. Yep, you better watch out for me too. Since I will get a tool to lessen my nausea. Though she says it as a joke, Kaminari nods at her with a serious look on his face. Yes, honestly, yours is one of the strongest quirks in class. I mean, one touch and most people are finished in a fight against you. For example, remember the Nomu that we fought during USJ? They nod. Well, if you touched him and let him float up, it wouldn't be able to do anything, game over. A creature that was able to fight All Might almost equally, you would have been able to immobilize it. Chaco stops walking and looks shocked. She never thought about it that way, she never saw her quirk as something amongst the strongest in the class. 
Especially when Kaminari mentioned Nomu, all of them saw how terrifying the creature was. But Ochako could have handled it with one touch. Even Izuku was amazed by this. He is also amazed by Kaminari. No wonder he took his quirk so far. I should ask him for some advice sometimes. He will know how to improve something. He is about to ask when. Boom! An explosion covers them all. Boom! As the explosion suddenly covers them all, Kaminari activates his ability in a split second, pushing all of the others out of the way, while he himself not getting out of the way. While he does all of this he can't help but think. Future knowledge for the win. He feels a body hit him, and a soft feeling on his chest as he is pushed to the ground by the explosion. When the dust clears Kaminari finds Mei lying on top of him. He has a gentle smile on his face as he asks, Are you okay? The others are shocked as they are shocked by Mei's exposed cleavage getting close to Kaminari's face. The latter doesn't seem to mind at all and seems more concerned with Mei's well-being. Sorry, sorry, says Mei hurriedly as she gets up and looks at Kaminari. Oh, I remember you. You were the sports festival winner. Your name was... Uh... Sorry, totally forgot your name. Kaminari seems not bothered by this and gets off the ground. No need to feel bad. My name is Kaminari Denki. These are Izuku, Ochako, and Tenya. He introduces everyone else that was with him. Mei nods at this. Nice meeting you all. My name is Mei. Hope I get along with ya. Izuku blushes at this. Finding Mei to be a very cheerful and nice girl. Plus, the revealing tank top doesn't help his embarrassment at all. Mei doesn't notice any of this as she walks away to continue developing her babies. Babies? Asks Kaminari, confused by this. Though he already knew everything about this, he gives it his maximum effort to hide any indications of knowing the future. That is his biggest weapon that he has, not just the events he doesn't mind if they change. But just knowing his enemy's powers is priceless. Yep. Babies. Confirms Mei enthusiastically. Okay. Kaminari says, appearing weirded out by the situation a little. Anyway. We are here for some costume upgrades. This makes Mei turn around and excitingly approaches Kaminari. Really? What do you want? Kaminari puts his hands on her shoulders and makes her distance a little. Too close. Mei seems confused by this. Not understanding the social norms at all. That is when Power Loader appears. He comes out of the development studio room and looks at Mei being overly affectionate with a stranger. This causes him to sigh. Mei is talented, but her social understanding is zero. Oi Mei, don't bother them. Also, you had another explosion. He is a little annoyed at this. T. Mei just makes a cute face and put out her tongue. Don't tee me. This annoys Power Loader even more. Kaminari and the others feel like they are witnessing a weird moment. One which they can't interfere with at all. But after a couple of minutes of him reprimanding Mei, he finally addresses Kaminari, Izuku, Tenya, and Ochako. Oh, sorry you had to witness that. Come on in now. They awkwardly enter the development studio. And as Izuku explains what he wishes for his upgrade, Mei forces him to try out a powered suit she made. The suit twists Izuku's body around as its operating limits were not programmed correctly. He is a pushover, thinks Kaminari, seeing Izuku being pushed over by Mei to try the different machines that are untested. Izuku will never be able to make people believe in him if he is such a pushover, though he contemplates that he doesn't plan to help Midoriya. After all, confidence gained by someone else's interference is a fake one. Mei continues to cause trouble for the three students as she gives Tenya arm engines, sending him into the ceiling. Okay, maybe every one of the males in our class is a pushover, concludes Kaminari. Hey, Denki, do you want to try this new machine? Mei asks Kaminari, showing him some bracelets. He just shakes his head at that. No way he is trying anything that she makes and is untested. No thanks. I don't want to end up like him, he says while pointing at Tenya who is still on the ceiling due to his hand propeller gear. Uh, that was intentional. Yeah, totally intentional, argues Mei, even though her expression shows that even she is unsure. Kaminari doesn't hide his uncertainty at this, but she still sticks to her point. Yeah, Engine Boy can now run with his arms while his legs cool off. It is a 100% effective product. I don't know about that. Could be more effective, counters Kaminari. Like a cooling system in his leg gear, as they were talking about this, Izuku looked at his hand, which has numerous scars from using one for all. Suddenly his eyes widened in shock as if a lightning bolt hit him. 
Power Loader apologizes for May's self-centered temperament but also explains to the students that she is an especially talented engineer who will likely help them in their later pro hero careers. Achiko mentions she would like a costume upgrade to better control nausea caused by her quirk. Boom! But not before May can cause another explosion with another one of her inventions. For days later, Mineta and Izuku are resting on the training grounds while looking at the others training. So upgrades did you put on your suit? Asks Mineta. Just some basic designs. Also the soles of my boots are metallic now. Answers Izuku, while thinking about May's excitement as she helped him. He didn't mind getting attention from a girl, but he gets chills every time he thinks of May. Chills of fear that is. He tested so many pieces of equipment on him. What about a cosmetic change? Mentions Mineta. Izuku's hero costume isn't that connected to the latest fashion sense. Nah, I am not going to change the base too much, says Izuku. A smile appears on his face as he thinks of it. Because my mother designed this costume for me. At this time, Fumikid shows off his ultimate move to midnight, which involves dark shadow enveloping him like armor to compensate for his weaknesses in close range combat. Katsuki also shows off his new ultimate move, AP Shot, in which he focuses his explosive power on a smaller surface area, allowing it to penetrate a thick concrete wall. A piece of the wall Katsuki just broke through crumbles off and falls towards All Might. Katsuki and Shota warn All Might, but Izuku jumps out with one for all. Full cowl activated. Izuku destroys the falling wall with a single kick, showing off a new move, which he names one for all, Full Cowl, Shoot Style. As Katsuki and Shota look on in surprise, All Might smiles at Izuku in approval. Whoa, that a new fighting style? The first time I see you fight with anything else than your fists. Ijiro commends Izuku on his new moves and is surprised by his new fighting style. Kaminari looks at this with a strange look in his eyes that no one else except Momo notices. That look only lasted for a couple of seconds but it brought Momo chills on her spine. What was that feeling? Wonders Momo but she dismissed it as she goes back to training. Yeah, it is thanks to the new souls I got from the support department, explains Izuku. Though shoot style isn't quite a super move, still it is a step in the right direction, says All Might in his deflated form. Proud smile on his face. Oi, you shouldn't get so close to his place, it is dangerous. Aizawa warns All Might to stay a safe distance away from the training session to avoid having All Might reveal his real identity to protect himself. Oh, okay says All Might before turning towards Bakugo. Also, sorry, my fault for getting too close to a dangerous area. Not your fault. Yeah, says Bakugo as he looks at the skeleton-like man in front of him. Be more careful next time. Suddenly, Bakugo's eyes widen, an almost impossible idea appearing in his head. He then looks at Kaminari. He should know something about this, but seeing Kaminari training, he doesn't interrupt his training and just decides to go cool off. Izuku also notices that Kaminari and Aijiro both have new costume upgrades as well. Aijiro, you also got new upgrades? Asks Izuku, curious about what he could have gotten. After all, it might give some ideas to him too. Aijiro smirks at that. Heh, you have no idea Dash, he gets excited about his new style. But he's interrupted by the arrival of Lad King and Class 1B, Nido Taunts Class 1A as usual. Sup, wanna trash, we are gonna destroy your class in the Dash. But Nairo 2 is interrupted as Aizawa says. Class 1A and 1B will not compete against each other in the provisional hero license exam. Aizawa then goes on to explain that most of the participants in the exam will not be first-year students either and will have more experience than Class 1A, Kaminari POV as the training class passes. I go change and immediately out of my changing room see Bakugo waiting for me. He looks at me intently. Seems like he has something to say. But I break the moment by saying, you know, waiting for me out of the changing room, and after that staring at me so intensely can give people the wrong idea. If it isn't the wrong idea, then no thank you, I don't swing that way. Sai Bakugo sighs at this in annoyance, knowing that getting in an argument with me is pointless as I will just spin things around and make the situation worse for him. Annoying as always, I smirk at that. Yep. So what did you need me for? I and him start walking towards the dorm when he narrows his eyes. That Tashinori Yagi? Doesn't he remind you of someone? You mean all might... I tell him, immediately that gets his attention as he nods slightly. Then I continue. After you find out All Might's quirk, maybe then you will figure out what is going on. Of course, even I only have assumptions till now. Though some of them have already been verified, he nods at that too. I and Bakugo don't have a bad relationship. 
We did fight villains together, so that makes him put up with my personality, which is 99.9% .9 of the time joking around. That is when Bakugo out of now nowhere says, Kaminari, fight me. That stops me in my tracks as I look at him with a serious look on my face. As I hear Bakugo's challenge, I am a little surprised at that. But judging by his personality, I should have expected it. I just never thought about such things. So, you sure you want to fight me? I ask him, already knowing the answer to this. Yes, he answers, in the end I just sigh at this. It is a shame. Where? I ask him simply. I see no need to try and convince him out of this. He needs to learn that I am better than him in every way. He is strong but nowhere near my level. Akugo points towards one of the training grounds and says, There. General POV after arriving at the training ground, Kaminari sees that it is just another city structure. It is mostly used for rescue training. Kaminari does some stretches. I am ready whenever you are. Bakugo shrugs and puts on his grenade-like gloves. Boom! He propelled himself towards Kaminari, but the latter doesn't seem phased by this at all. He dodges to the side as lightning runs through his body. Boom! Bakugo uses explosions to propel his fist and almost backhands Kaminari. HM? He predicted what I would do. Kaminari was a little surprised by this, as usually, Bakugo fights with rage and instincts, a very suitable way for him to fight, as his anger makes him sweat more, strengthening his quirk. But now he seemed calm. Strange. But it seems like Bakugo has become better. Or is he someone else disguised as him? No, I doubt something like that would happen. No one else but Bakugo could use his quirk so good. Bakugo uses explosions generated from his palms to twist his body and deliver a powerful and fast kick at Kaminari's head. But he still dodges it, seeing that the kick was quite fast and powerful. Kaminari's speed is still too extreme for Bakugo to be able to hit him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Still, the usually angry future hero had spent a considerable amount of time studying Kaminari and the way he moves. But suddenly, Bakugo's hands start sizzling. This is the only warning Kaminari can get, because before the sound even fully reaches him, boom! A giant explosion engulfs both him and Bakugo. Once the dust clears up, Bakugo's arms are shaking due to overexertion. But Kaminari was covered in iron sand from head to toe, so no part of the explosion hit him. The iron sand peels off like an onion, and Kaminari comes out of it completely unharmed. Damn. Bakugo, you almost got me there. That is true, the explosion was way too fast for him to dodge it completely. But he could tank it with his iron sand ability, he always keeps some under his clothes. Kind of like armor, though he uses it for training and keeps it on during most of the day. Bakugo gets angry at this, he has put in hours of work at this and analyzed Kaminari's movements during training. He is a little at the ineffectiveness of this, so he goes back to his rage way of fighting. BZZZT, but then, before his instincts can even catch up, Kaminari is already pushing him down on the ground with just a casual shove. Bakugo can't even react as his whole body is paralyzed. Bam! When he hits the ground, Kaminari also lies down on the ground and looks at the stars. Welp, that was good. You have talent. Damn it! Bakugo just swears at this. I don't need your sympathy. Well, you don't have my sympathy, says Kaminari casually, he doesn't pity Bakugo. The kid is strong-headed, he won't suddenly give up just because of a loss. But really, though, anger is a weapon and you charging recklessly is bad. Even if it is kind of covered by your instincts, you will need to be calm and angry at the same time. A calm rage of sorts, so while you will continue sweating, you will be able to think calmly. TCH, Bakugo is annoyed, but he remembers the way Kaminari always handles things calmly and how he dealt with the villains when they were captured. Though he will never admit it externally, Bakugo respects someone like Kaminari. Well then, keep training and one day you will become quite strong, Bakugo, says Kaminari as he gets up and walks away. Though on the outside he was his usual happy self, internally is contemplating where this will lead Bakugo to. He can't see the future and Bakugo has changed a lot due to his influence. Kaminari scratches his head in annoyance. Damn it! How did brother used to do it? Hmm. Okay, take into account Bakugo's personality. He is boisterous, loud, reckless, and stubborn. He is unlikely to become a villain due to his true admiration for heroes. He is also unlikely to try and cripple me to surpass me or use underhanded methods due to his pride. TCH still way too hard to predict anything too accurate. He is truly troubled by this, he would like to know the future. A quirk for it would have been useful. I should keep Night Eye alive, that would save me so much trouble. 
Kaminari might not be going too hard on the villains and only killing a couple of them. But he still plans to make the hero's side stronger. Yes, I can just see it now. My stage in the spotlight where I won't have to play the prey anymore. Where I can become a predator. Where I will jump to the number one hero in one fellow swoop. On the morning of the provisional hero licensing exam, Class 1A travels to the National Dagoba Arena. Mineta looks around nervously, because every one of his classmates might have a very good chance to pass. He felt that he was lacking when compared to some others. He looks at Kaminari and sees him surrounded by girls. No, no, Toru. I am sure that you will pass too, says Kaminari with a smile on his face. You think so? Kaminari, yes, everyone should do their best. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you give it your all. You won't have any regrets. Mineta can feel Kaminari's charisma seep off his words like sweet honey. Damn that bastard. He already has his harem of girls around him. I want to be popular. Yells out Mineta, weirding out everyone. Making them look at him like he is a creep. That is when Aizawa appears. Mineta, stop your daydreaming. You are scaring everyone away. Also, don't worry. Everyone just has to do their best. And you will pass. HM? Aizawa Sensei, from what I know we should become semi-pros if we get these licenses right. Asks Kaminari, curious, to reconfirm some of his knowledge. Yep, confirms Aizawa casually. Hell yeah! Plus Ultra all the way! Yells Kirishima out loud. Kaminari knows what is gonna happen next, so he just goes to do some stretches to the side. Ignoring the drama between Todoroki and Inesa. Whirlwind. Wind control. Quirk. After that, a tired-looking guy comes and explains how the exam will work. It is pretty much free for all. To accomplish this, only the first 100 students out of 1540 gathered to take the exam who complete the first test will move on to the next one. Each student has six red balls and three targets to attach to their body where they are visible to others. The students must hit other students' targets. Once a student has all of their targets hit, they are out, and whoever attached the third ball claims the defeat. Participants need to eliminate two students to move on to the next phase of the exam. Kaminari POV. After making sure the people in my class are not nervous. This should be everything that they need to pass. Now they just need to be a little lucky and even the weakest amongst us will pass. The shutters fall and we are in the field where the exam will be held. Once the signal comes for the exam to start, everyone starts targeting our class. The weeding out of UA something that happens every year. But, BZZZT my hair stands and my eyes shine yellow. I look around me. Everyone seems to be moving in slow motion. I also spot a certain girl to the side and a smirk makes its place on my face. Toga in her disguise looks as the other school students attack the UA students. But what she is mostly concentrated on is Kaminari. As she expected, he destroys the competition. But he does leave some for his other classmates too. But what caught her eye is his movements. She puts on some glasses. It is something that slows down the Perceptor of Time and replays every move that Kaminari does along the past seconds. She analyzes his movements and looks for any openings. He is surprisingly skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat. Did he train it? Even though he doesn't need it. Contemplates Toga. Era Kaminari Senpai is quite hardworking. I want to see that scary look of his once more. Those cold eyes. Even Tamura isn't as scary as Kaminari was at the time when she was alone with him. Kaminari grabs two people by the top of their heads and smashes them together while at the same time hitting their targets, eliminating them. He has gotten even better, analyzes Toga, biting her lips till it draws blood. She can't see any opening. She can't go and have some fun with Izuku now that she has to deal with Kaminari. Damn, I would rather be with Izuku. Kaminari, Chan is no longer as attractive as he used to be. He is scary now. Everyone, stay together. Yells Kaminari towards 1A. No. I can't use my quirk with too many people around, so I will be going on my own. Says Todoroki. This makes Kaminari look at the ice flame boy coldly. But he doesn't do anything to stop the man. Bakugo though does stay and surprises everyone as he calmly runs forward. Boom. He uses his explosions to propel himself. Immediately he appears in front of the other student that is about to throw some hardened balls. But Bakugo grabs him by his hair and slams his head on the ground. Bam! He then uses his sphere to touch the targeted spot on his opponent's uniform. Catch on! He is calm? Izuku is surprised by all of this too. Everyone is, but that doesn't last long as they have to concentrate on the fight in front of them. 
One of the other school students sees this and uses his quake quirk to rattle the ground and cause a miniature earthquake. This makes everyone stumble slightly. This causes some of the balls that were being fired from underground. Acid Veil yells out Mina as she spews acid out of her palms and uses them like whips to disintegrate any balls coming closer to her. While at the same time, she protects her teammates from any attacks too. Fumikage sees this and uses Dark Abyss as his ultimate move and after equipping part of his quirk Dark Shadow, he controls it to extend its arms with balls in them, and he targets a random girl from the opposing side. He tries to use it against another girl, Tatami, but she collapses the upper part of her body and narrowly dodges. But still, everyone is losing their footing, especially as another earthquake lands, and this time it caves in a deep part of where one class is. Kaminari also stumbles for a split second. Now! In that split second, Toga disguised as Kami, a woman with straight, fawn-colored hair that reaches just below her shoulders and large, dark brown eyes. She has noticeably full, plump, and glossy lips as well as a quite curvaceous figure. But Kaminari still has his auto-dodge barrier around his body and can dodge, but is surprised as a small scratch appears on his cheek. Suddenly his body wobbles. Poison. He concludes calmly as he straightens up as he starts releasing heat and his skin turns red. But in that split second that Kaminari overheats his body, his auto-dodge barrier goes down, and at that moment Toga uses her move and disappears from Kaminari's senses. He narrows his eyes at this. Toga, but there is nothing that he can do, and that is when Kaminari notices something else that is strange too. My reaction time? Why is it so slow? This one truly shocked him. Is there someone else around here with a hypnosis-type quirk? Theorizes Kaminari, his eyes darting around. Fwish. Suddenly, another large gash appears on his back, and blood spews out in droves. Kami smiles at this and everyone else is also surprised. After all, this is only a test and heroes don't usually use such heavy force. Don't move. An instruction lands on Kaminari's head, and he truly can't move at all. Kami, Toga, smiles even more widely at this. Yes, the doctor was right after all, now with the poison inside of him, he won't be able to move for a bit. Even if he boils it off, that amount is not simple to discharge. Slowly, a translucent knife appears on Toga's hand. Huh. Guess I should stop now. Catch me if you can, says Toga as she disappears from everyone's view while taking off her clothes. This causes everyone to subconsciously look away for a second. And that is enough as she disappears from everyone's view after that. Already having taken what she wanted, Bakugo looks at this in surprise, the seemingly unsurpassable mountain that is Kaminari wincing as he falls to his knees, his face pale at the loss of blood. That isn't a student. Aizawa from the stands, together with Miss Joke, immediately recognize who Kami was. All of the proctors who were in the camera room also go into action. Shit. A villain got in. They all go into fight mode. But it was already too late as a dark portal appears and Toga lets go of her disguise and waves at the camera as she disappears into the portal. Next, she appears in an undisclosed hideout. Tamura is in there scratching his neck nervously. Dobby is just laying back. Double was playing D&D &D with the Ninja Turtle lookalike. The whole scene was bizarre, but when Toga appears, everyone looks at her intently. She does a peace sign and excitedly exclaims, Yay! It was a success! At this time another comes through a dark portal. It is a scruffy man who looks shabby, has a beer belly and dark circles under his eyes. He seems like your average shut-in. I did my job. Where is my pay now? Ha 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 ha. Tamura laughs at this madly unable to contain his excitement. That arrogant bastard. He thought that he was all that crap, but he is just another loser. <sighs> Dobby smirks. Yes, it was just as the doctor said. Denki Kaminari is almost unbeatable in a straight fight, but his quirk doesn't fortify his mental fortitude. It was the perfect trap. They knew where he would be and when he was already under the effect of the quirk before he even entered the exam grounds. This quirk has some heavy restrictions, so it was quite hard to use too. But once it took effect, it made Kaminari's body follow an order no matter what. The simpler the order, the stronger the effect. Kaminari was told to stay still, an order as simple as it can get. That is when Compress comes in and pulls Pikas out of his marble ball. I brought Pikas for everyone. Back in the arena, Kaminari just a hollow look in his eyes. The poison is spreading all over his body and due to the blood coming out of his back, if he uses to detoxify the poison, it will start boiling the water blood too. But his mind was in a whole other place as this happened. Am I gonna lose? 
wonders Kaminari. Certain memories from his first life start to resurface again. A memory of his and his brother eating pikas on the kitchen table. Remember little brother, once a loser, always a loser. Because to be a loser means that there is a winner, someone greater than you. That must never happen in life because once you are okay with the first loss in life, you won't mind the other losses. Actually, you will just get used to losing so much that it will become the norm. Oi, come on now, don't say such things, brother. Just enjoy the pika. Heh, listen to me, you twerp. What I am saying is don't be a loser. I know, I know, you are just gonna lead this conversation to my grades in school. Sheesh, no need to be so strict about everything. Though he said that he did admire his older brother wanting to be like him. He would even say that he envied him. But two months later and a man comes to the door. Are you mister? Yeah, why? I am afraid your brother? He has passed away. In a car accident, looking at the cooling corpse of his older brother, I got a new opening. I saw it. The cruel truth of losing. Ran over by a sports car, his brother, the one who seemed to always be in control. I stared at the cold corpse in the coffin. It was half covered as the lower part of the body was mangled. Tears rolled down my eyes. I couldn't help it. My brother was never the nicest person. I wouldn't even call him a decent human being. Always manipulating those around him, even me. But he was so selfish, just so, so selfish and selfless, he always did everything for the family. What was I supposed to do now? How could I take on his role? The people at the funeral were all sad too, only knowing the mask of my brother, the smiling and helping young man. Always at the right place when you needed him, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that everyone who knew him loved him dearly. But I, I never had any of these naive thoughts about him. There are better men than him who were hated. He played his role perfectly, so why did he still die like this? Pathetic. You were supposed to live. I hated him for dying and leaving me all alone. His usual borderline psychotic advice would never be there to comfort me that I have someone powerful at my side that would protect me, even if the whole world was to go against my ideals. But even without him, as I grew old, I noticed that a part of my brother always lived with me. His strange advice was always imprinted in my mind like a holy gospel. Life continued and I built a family, a beautiful one. I named my first son after my brother, even though they were nothing alike, both in character and appearance. He took more after my wife. I suppose that my life was relatively happy. Everyone has their tragedies and I never saw myself as special. Even though I grew cold on the inside, I kept a smile on the outside. After all, a smile a day keeps society at bay. I got relatively rich and lived a relatively normal life and died a relatively normal death until I opened my eyes once more. This time as a baby, Kaminari's body shakes slightly Everyone in class 1A and even the other hero candidates are worried about this. After all, here everyone is aiming to be heroes and what they saw was more than just that. Boom! But contrary to everyone's expectations, iron sand bursts from the ground and surrounds Kaminari. The smell of iron fills the air. He looks at everyone and he gets up casually, as if he wasn't injured at all. Though the wound on his backache is terrible as it feels like even the muscles got. I am okay everyone. The exam can continue like usual, says Kaminari trying to reassure everyone. But in reality, he was trying to tell the exam proctors to continue and that they don't need to get immediate medical attention. Because he knows what will happen once he is pulled out of here, he will lose terribly. That fate, one of a loser, is something that Kaminari will never accept. Because as soon as he does, he will never be able to stop losing. That is the sad reality of the situation. As once someone is okay with something, the high standard that he has put on himself will be lowered. So using the medical knowledge that he knows, the one that he had to learn to use his quirk to such high levels. He slowly controls the iron sand and heats it using electricity. He does so till the iron sand is sizzling. Then he puts it on his back, burning his wound shut. Tears come out of his eyes. But he has covered himself with iron sand now so no one can see him wallow in pain. Fuck. I just need to hold on for a little while. Thinks Kaminari. His eyes leaning towards the cold look expressing how he really feels about the situation. Enraged. A cold rage. That is all there is to it. In his eyes at least, he has decided that the villains are too dangerous to let live from now on. I see the error in my reasoning. I assumed that they wouldn't be able to read through me or find any weakness. No, I know for a fact they shouldn't be able to. Someone has interfered here. I underestimated them. Well, that won't happen anymore. Few wash. Boom. Kaminari then starts using his iron sand to defend and attack. Which people close to him notice that this is unusual, as he doesn't rely on the iron sand as a clutch. 
Instead, he usually uses it to complement his fighting style. But none of them dwell into this too much and instead continue with their exams. After a couple of minutes, Kaminari notices that he has started breathing more heavily than usual. Also, it seems like no matter how much oxygen he takes it, he can't seem to be able to dill up in it. His body isn't at a level where it can keep up with the strain, so he uses iron sand as an armor below his clothes and moves it in a walking motion, having the armor move instead of the body. Kaminari POV. I will kill them all. Those damn villains. They will all die. I feel pain going through my body is something beyond just simple pain. It feels like lava boring on my back and melting away at my flesh. I manipulate the iron sand armor under my clothes to fly up. This way I can see all of the attacks coming at me. Currently, my reserves are dropping faster, and my mental faculties are a little muddled due to the pain. I see one person coming towards me. I just use the iron sand to grab him by his feet and tie them together. I then point my finger at him. BZZZT he is knocked out immediately. I can't afford to go easy on them anymore. Still, I must keep my cork under control to not kill them since just a little too high voltage and they are done. This cork of mine is way more dangerous than most out there. Still, I can pass the exam with just how I am currently. I have all of the targets I need. I should have immobilized Toga as soon as I could then. No, my thought process has been wrong all along. I should just kill her. No. I will kill her the next time I catch sight of her. Teach. This sucks. Being brought to such a pitiful state. I hate mind manipulating quirks, and I can't even get out of them, no way to defend against it. I need to continue developing more. I have Shinso who has a quirk similar to that, so I need to find a way to get out of it. So I no need to dwell on these things for now, what is done is done. I can't change the past, so I must look towards the future and ways to continue to improve on my weaknesses. Though this one will be hard, because it isn't something that can be solved by me having just more raw power or control over my quirk. Images of Toga's movements and how she disappeared from my senses play in my head. No. She completely disappeared from my senses. My memory of her movements is still fresh. Hmm. Maybe I can get something out of this after all. General POV. The exam continues and everyone else from class 1A gathers into teams to fight the others targeting them. This is all because they don't know their opponent's quirks so they have to be extra careful and have someone with them to pull them out of trouble just in case. After some time, finally, an announcement comes. Check. Check. One, two, three. Just checking here. Okay, now, 76 people have passed the exam. Good luck, everyone, on the second exam, as it will be prepared soon. Till then, you have a dozen more minutes to pass this exam. Also, the people who have already passed will have their names called out, so they can go to the waiting room. The winners breathe a sigh of relief at this, while the ones who hadn't gathered their needed requirements to pass are panicked. The chaos erupts all around as everyone tries their best to pass. The warning was a little strange. Kaminari, on the other hand, contemplates on what was being said. It didn't take long for him to understand what this means. This rule sounds too shabby, like it was just made up on the spot. That is when he understood that it was just added in due to him. So he takes this chance and goes towards the waiting room. He just levitates himself all the way there. Once he arrives, he sees Momo, Kirishima, Bakugo, Tokoyami, Todoroki and Jairu have already passed too. While there were also some others from other schools who had also passed, but they are in other rooms. As soon as Kaminari enters the UA room, everyone looks at him worryingly and the atmosphere is tense and quiet. But by now, Kaminari has already calmed down and waves at them with a smile on his face. Come on now, everyone. What is it with all the gloom faces? I am okay. It was just a little scratch. Bahaha. I knew that, of course. I wasn't worried at all, exclaims Ijiro. Bring the first to talk while giving Kaminari a thumbs up. That is as expected. Super manly of you, Kaminari. Bakugo, on the other hand, just narrows his eyes and sees Kaminari's movements. Before their fight, he had analyzed Kaminari so he can now tell that he isn't as okay as he says. He is just so full of crap, thinks Bakugo. I doubt he can even walk right now if he let go of his quirk. But he wasn't the only one who caught on as Momo figured out what is going on, but she didn't say anything either. He must have his reasons for hiding his injuries, while Kaminari has phenomenal control over his quirk, but he still can't make his suit of armor walk exactly as he would usually walk. So that is a problem for him, as sharp people can notice what is going on almost immediately. Bomb! And that is when Aizawa kicks the door open casually and comes in with a tired look on his face. Denki Kaminari, come with me for a second. Kaminari doesn't refute him and walks with Aizawa but as soon as they are outside, he starts floating instead of walking behind his teacher. 
Aizawa notices this but doesn't comment on it. But he does say something else. You should drop out of the exam. No way, answers Kaminari calmly without missing a beat. I see, is all Aizawa says, expecting a situation like this to arise. Anyway, then you should accept some healing. Okay, but no recovery, lady, because I will pass out from fatigue if she uses her quirk on me, confirms Kaminari. He is still keeping himself together, barely, despite the burning pain on his back. He also knows that the wound has been burned shut skillfully, so it won't disable his physical abilities in the future at all. Okay, Aizawa accepts the terms without a problem. He knows just how stubborn Kaminari can be, so he doesn't see the need to argue with the kid. Also, you are very childish and short-sighted, Denki Kaminari. I know, says Kaminari, ignoring the pointing and dissatisfied look that Aizawa gives him. He will never understand what winning means to me. I must never lose, that is my way of life, if I can't even do that, then what is a life worth living for? As a loser, I will constantly be pushed down by the winners, contemplates Kaminari. Understanding how it is to be at the top in his previous life, he also knows how the top looks down at the bottom. It's the same as looking at unimportant trash. To be a loser means that there must be a winner over me. I must always be the winner no matter what. Once they arrive at the infirmary, Recovery Lady is there but Aizawa shakes his head, meaning that Kaminari doesn't want the treatment. She only sighs at this in disappointment. Let me see the wound, says Recovery Lady, and Kaminari takes off his shirt, showing them his back. That makes even Aizawa wince as a part of the skin is pulled off with the shirt, showing the raw flesh below. Era, this is worse than I thought, says Recovery Lady. She still has a calm look on her face. She has seen worse, though rarely in a child especially since Kaminari had self-inflicted these burns to forcefully close up his original wound. Young boy, this will lead to horrible lifelong scars on your back if you decide to not immediately heal them. Doesn't matter. That is an easy answer for Kaminari. He doesn't mind any scars on his body as long as it is not his face. You are being dumb. Aizawa criticizes him. But Kaminari doesn't budge on this. Recovery lady sighs at this once more and moves to look at Kaminari's wound. At least the burning is made skillfully, it is mostly skin to stop the bleeding so there is no muscle or internal bleeding. Aizawa, can you go and call Becerra? Aizawa goes outside to call that person which Kaminari doesn't even remember being in the manga. Later on, he is ready for the second part of the exam. He is now able to move fully and has had some internal stitching done with some random guy's quirk. As expected, the quirks have revolutionized the medical industry too, contemplates Kaminari, also, the guy named Becerra was just an old doctor that sucked the heat from his wounds. Very useful for burn wounds. And so, the Kaminari enters the second part of the exam. As Kaminari enters the second stage of the provincial exam. It is rescue training as he predicted that it would most likely be. It was the same as he remembers from his first life. But he usually doesn't try to judge everything from that knowledge. As he has already changed too much. Just in case things become unexpected. Still, as soon as the exam starts... Kaminari also levitates himself to charge forward. While he has been given top-tier first aid, he is still injured, so running lighting through his body and putting such strain in it isn't optimal. Plus, while he acted all tough in front of Aizawa and the others, this is all just a test, so he doesn't plan to push his body beyond his limits and break it permanently. So he controls his iron sand to do most of the saving. He moves giant structures and levitates people out of the places with a smile on his face. Don't worry everyone, for I am here in a flash. Though he says that, some people seem to want to criticize him, but he quickly shuffled them away from the cameras and put them in the safe area. Kaminari just talked so much that he didn't even let them respond, which in a way classifies as comforting the target and making them forget about the catastrophe that they just experienced. So I had the splinter in my foot, right? Says Kaminari, talking to a kid who has a confused look on his face. No! Wrong! That makes the kid flinch, scaring him. But Kaminari acts like he doesn't notice and keeps talking. It was a big splinter, like half a toothpick. He is just spewing nonsense, not letting the victims even talk. Normally, he would be able to comfort them to the best of his ability. But currently, his back is hurting so bad that he can't even crouch down. But he covers that due to rescuing a lot of people. I hope those bastards at the observation table take into account that I am injured. That should get me a couple more points, complains Kaminari internally. If those observatory guys had done their job correctly, then a villain like Toga wouldn't have been here in the first place. But he of course keeps these thoughts to himself. Act like prey? 
be a predator. The latter part of his thoughts ring in his head. He tries to muddle his pain with these thoughts. At this time, since he was using too much electricity, his thoughts slow down a little as his control isn't as good as usual and his mental facilities so strange thoughts appear in his head. Act like a lowly, be a pedo dash. Okay, time to wrap this up. My thoughts are going into stupid mode due to discharging too much electricity. Even as the fake villains planted by the exam site, the villains were just Gang Orca and some other goons. Kaminari didn't pay any extra attention to this and concentrated on saving people and restraining any villain goons that come closer. He leaves Gang Orca to Todoroki, his wind pal, Izuku, not caring about anything there and as if he doesn't notice. But around the middle of the exam, Kaminari starts breathing heavily. His injured body sweaty and feeling already tired due to the strain it has been put through today. He winces as his injury flares up. Damn, this, this pain if only it would stop. If only my body wouldn't fail my will. Move. His body simply couldn't keep up, so in the end, Kaminari has to lay down, even the control starts failing, and his iron sand just falls on the ground uselessly. Damn. 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 Don't fail me now. Huff 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 Kaminari's breathing gets even heavier and his face is flushed in exhaustion. His legs feel like noodles, his arms heavy, and it feels like a mountain is in his back. I should be a winner. If I pass it out, now. Bam! He falls on the ground, passed out. Kaminari! Yells out Mina worryingly. She was the one closest to him, so she gets close to him and touches his forehead. It feels like he is burning. Psst, a large amount of electricity is discharged from his body. Making Mina jump back scared. Kaminari's body moves as if possessed by a ghost. He has shocked himself back into consciousness. Bam! But he still falls on the ground, unconscious once more. This time, his quirk doesn't discharge as he has used almost all of his electricity stored inside of him. Something that he hasn't done in years. From the observing rooms, Aizawa, Ms. Joke, and Recover Lady are all looking at Kaminari. Even some of the others are captivated by the sight. Giving it his all, many people can say that, but most don't understand its meaning. Kaminari, he gave it his all. It's the poison that was previously inside his body, says Recovery Lady with her usual grandmotherly look on her face. Though he purged it off his body, it had already attacked him by then. It made his immune response overreact. Plus the injury, blood loss, and just general exhaustion, he would have fallen over any second he stepped into the second stage. Surprisingly, he lasted a lot more than I thought he would. Aizawa grunts at this in annoyance. As a teacher, he should have stopped Kaminari, but his hero side took over at the time and wanted to see the young man's spirit. Ms. Joke wasn't laughing, which is rare for her, she just looked at Kaminari calmly. She is amazed on the inside because she wouldn't be sure if she would be as hard-headed as Kaminari even if people's lives were in the line for real. Heroes are humans so they are not all the same, and the feeling of fear and sloth is within all their hearts. Many others too, both the good and bad, even villains have those. Not everything is as simple as white and black. The world has always been more of a gray color. There are corrupt heroes even though society acts like that isn't so. Deep within them, all the heroes have accepted that, but they like to pretend otherwise. That was the fact of this society. Some villains were forced to be there because of circumstances too. But someone with that kind of will in no way is a faker. His body gave up before his will did. That was the general gist of everyone's thoughts in here. Thinking that Kaminari did all of that and went through so much pain just to save people that weren't in danger to even begin with. I really don't like people with hero syndrome, complains recovery lady. They are just the worst kind of patients. The next time Kaminari opens his eyes, the exam has already passed, and there are a bunch of flowers around him. For a second, his mind feels like in a half-dream state so he can't think clearly. Holy crap, there are so many flowers. Did I go to heaven? Wait, God, I don't care about heaven. I want to go back and live in the world. But his thoughts clear up, and he sees that he is lying down on a bed with flowers around him. He also sees a bunch of cards around him. Itchum. How the hell do I get out of this place? Kaminari looks around and sees that the whole room is filled with flowers. Wow! Just how many days was I asleep? I hope it isn't one of those where I was asleep for years. He gets up and feels the slight ache on his back. He sees that his back is fully bandaged. Seeing this and lying back on the bed, he takes a couple of cards and starts reading them. Ugh! Kirishima's handwriting is so crap, he complains as he tries to read the first note. Whatever... I will read this later, at the same time in an undisclosed lab underground. 
a doctor who is a fairly old man of short stature. He is completely bald and has a very large, bushy mustache. He also wears rather peculiar goggles. He is in a dark room with a big capsule filled with a strange liquid in it. Inside of the capsule is a white-haired man with a distinct dark lightning bolt shape to the side of his spiky hair. Nomu, the doctor speaks silently but in an excited voice. My powerful Nomu, awaken now, the pale-skinned man inside the capsule starts thrashing. But the doctor just presses a button on the capsule and the thrashing body calms down. Guess you are not ready yet. Aizawa is walking down the school hallway towards the infirmary. Normally he wouldn't do such a thing, but he just got a notification that Kaminari has woken up and is reading the cards that he got from the people wishing him well. Annoying. The whole infirmary is filled with flowers, thinks Aizawa, remembering the wave of people that came to wish Kaminari well. It was not just Class 1A, it was students from other classes and even his classmates from middle school as Mina informed them through the online group that they have together. In the infirmary, Kaminari has already finished reading a quarter of the letters. Who would have thought that some girls who had a crush on me during middle school would still hold onto those feelings? It makes an old man like me feel… not really anything. Just kids thinking that middle school and high school is the end of their life. At that time the brain hasn't even finished developing, what would they even know about love? Kaminari dismisses the girl's letters as nothing more than childhood crushes. Things that fade away even in his first life he had a crush, which became unimportant in his life because life goes on. He doesn't remember her name, nor how she looked. Well, children will be children. He yawns a little and closes his eyes, concentrating on his electricity reserves. They were about a quarter full, which he isn't surprised, as it takes movement and even direct charge to normally regenerate his electricity. Mostly because of his enormous reserves of it, it would take about a week to regenerate it by himself. Bless the modern-day technology. His mind was thinking useless things, unusually chill. Having put the thoughts of his injury at the back of his mind, he already has decided how he will deal with villains from now on. As long as there are no cameras around, he will go for the kill that is easier. He has a calm state of mind then, and as he grabs the side of his bed, he thinks back to the scene of when he got sneak attacked and crushes the metal in his hand, but fixed it immediately. While he isn't calm, who would be after that? Though he is keeping his rage hidden and trying to keep it from clouding his mind. I must stay calm. I have many things to be glad about in this life. I was after all given another chance at life. Plus I wasn't reborn with the head of a dog, invisible or generally mutant looking. Kaminari contemplates, thinking about how good things he has in life. When Aizawa comes in he sees Kaminari just looking at some cards intently. Initially he thinks that Kaminari is concentrating on them. But in the end, he just throws it away. Wow, people really should improve their handwriting. I could write better with my feet. Aizawa looks at the letter on the ground and says, I don't think your handwriting is any better either. Hmm. Kaminari looks at him curiously, but then just smiles. Come on teach, it ain't that bad. Don't talk like a delinquent. Aizawa criticizes Kaminari on his way of talking, but in the end, he smiles. Glad to see that you are okay, brat. Hey, that is not how a teacher should talk, whines Kaminari jokingly, turning Aizawa's previous words on itself. Oi, don't push your luck, says Aizawa, an annoyed look in his eyes. Okay, okay, Kaminari accepts immediately, his causal smile still on his face. Still, though, thanks for letting me do something selfish and reckless, even if I didn't pass the exam. Who said you didn't pass? Conceded Aizawa with a smirk on his face. Kaminari has to give it his all to seem surprised at this. He expected this after giving it his all and making himself seem to have such a strong will. But after his surprised expression returns to normal, he just happily says, I see. Aizawa smirks at this and throws a card with hero spelled on the back. You have passed the provisional exam. Kaminari catches the card and sees that it seems like his ID. Ha huh, cool. Yeah. Anyway. See you later at homeroom. Aizawa waves casually as he walks out of the room. Being annoyed by the bright colors of the flowers. Kaminari is left in his room. Left to think some things about himself. Bam. But suddenly his door is slammed open and Momo comes in. He waves at her with a smile on his face. And tears come off her eyes. Yo Momo. How have you been? asks Kaminari as if talking to her every day. She just walks through the flowers and comes close, hugging him. T, that was stupid. Yep, pretty stupid, agrees Kaminari, gently hugging Momo back. She has such big boobs, hmm? They feel nice on my chest, 
Mina is also worried about you too, says Momo, having calmed herself, and with a flushed look on her face letting go of him. She just learned of Kaminari waking up, and as the acting class president, she was supposed to notify everyone else. But her emotions got in the way. I see. Well, I better surprise her by going to the class right now, smirks Kaminari, patting Momo in the head. Also, you look very beautiful today, Momo. I guess my body knew that I hadn't had my Momo energy recharged. She immediately flushes even more at that. Don't say such embarrassing stuff. Eric, come on now, Momo. Don't be like that. Think of my feelings, he says while grabbing her hand. Momo suddenly feels herself being pulled into the bed, and Kaminari throws a sheet over them. He has a mischievous look in his eyes as he grabs her hands. This makes her heart race faster. Her face flushed. Her brain is empty, unsure of what to say or do next. And no W we are in school. We can't do something like this, says Momo meekly. But Kaminari gets close to her and kisses her neck. Come on now, isn't this more exciting? Asks Kaminari, while his hand slowly moves under her shirt. This causes Momo to yelp lightly, but he kisses her to stop the sounds. While these actions were something that Momo, who follows the school textbooks word for word, would never do something like this. But for some reason, she feels excited at this, the risk of being caught makes her adrenaline go wild. Is this what people mean by some girls that like bad boys? Wonders Momo, as she no longer resists Kaminari, going with the flow, using her tongue in the kiss and hugging him, her hand goes to his lower body. Kaminari notices this and decides to not stop her. Currently, Momo is not thinking straight and he can see that, but he can't smash her in this hospital bed because there is a genuine risk of getting caught. That would just spell so many problems for him if it happened. But he doesn't mind the touching that they are doing right now. His experience plays a big part in this as not even 15 seconds later Momo's body shakes slightly. On. Kaminari, are you awake? That is when a voice comes from the door, causing both Kaminari and Momo to stop in shock. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.